Hello friends. Welcome to Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with on what if Naruto awakens the powerful demonic Keke Genkai. Also be sure to subscribe and like this video. Now let's begin. The day of the Chunin entrance exams rolled up quickly, so fast it was if the weeks flew past like wind-tossed leaves. Sakura sat in the front row of the stadium, next to Ino and Choji, who had been released from the hospital and was currently on his third pack of diet chips. Sasu-kun's going to win hands down. The two chanted, arm in arm and the large We Love Sasu Kun banner raised in the air. Choji wisely chose to keep his mouth shut. Hinata sat next to Kiba, who'd offered to escort her there, since she was still technically unfit to leave the hospital, and was looking at the arena, where most of the competitors had already gathered. Naruto was nowhere in sight, but that didn't seem to bother the heiress much, as she placed a hand to her chest. Naruto Kun. You'll be here. I know it. Suratobi sighed as he looked over the scene, clearly upset. Sasuke is absent too what the hell are you doing, Kakashi? Looking over at the Kazakiage, he scowled, remembering the strange letter he'd received the other day from a very familiar face. So Sun Agakur thinks they can catch us off guard eh? He smirked dryly. Not when their supposed ally is only pretending to be a missing nin. The Kazakiage felt the Hokage's knowing glare and began to sweat, worried that the plan may be discovered, until the older cage smiled and offered him a peanut. Aheyo, Sakura-san. Lee greeted as he hobbled over on his crutches. Guy stood behind him, like a sentinel, ready to cart his ward back to hospital, should the need arise. Have the matches started yet? Just as the Kanoichi was about to answer, there was a swirl of leaves, which blinded everyone down in the arena. When it cleared, Naruto stood next to a startled Hyuganiji. The Naruto in the stadium was a lot different from the Naruto everyone saw at the tower though, his sleeveless coat remained, but he wore what appeared to be the upper half of one of Guy's infamous green leotards, his hands were bandaged, and he appeared to be wearing bracers on both arms, both of which looked toned up through the skin-tight green fabric. His leggings were still the standard shinobi black, but he was wearing leg bracers, as well as his normal shinobi sandals. Also, his hair had gotten longer, that it had to be tied in a small ponytail, and if anyone bothered to look closely, he was reading the third in the famous shinobi throughout history and their achievement series. However, the most startling thing was that, even though he was standing right next to Niji, the Hyuga prodigy could barely feel his presence. Naruto turned the page in his book WTH, an almost bored expression on his face, before looking up at the senbon chewing shinobi Aoba, cocking an eyebrow. Am I late? Aoba snorted, actually, you're right on time. He smirked, you were cutting it pretty close though. If this statine bothered the blonde at all he didn't show it, and so Aoba turned around and faced the audience, clearing his throat. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chunin selection exam finals are about to begin. As the roars of the crowd filled the arena, Naruto ran an analytical eye over the competitors, noticing that two were missing, namely Dosu and Sasuke. The sound guy I could care less about but where the hell is Sasuke? The blonde muttered, trying to get a feel in his teammate's chakra. When his search came up empty he snorted. Bakashi sensei better not have passed his tardiness traits on to him. The first round will be Uzumaki Naruto vs Hayuga Niji, Aoba called out addressing both the crowd and the contenders. Contestants to the center, all others, please leave the arena via the exits. As the other Chunin hopefuls made their way to the exits, Naruto marked his place and put away his book, eyeing his opponent opponent carefully. Niji didn't appear to have changed much since he and Hinata fought a month ago, though he seemed to have gone up a level or two, if the chakra Naruto sensed was any indication. Remember, Jayakin relies on close-range combat, so keep the battle ranged, and you shouldn't have a problem. Naruto nodded, feeling his knuckles pop as he clenched a fist. No point in holding back here I'm going all out. The fox chuckled, amused. Just don't push yourself too far even my chakra won't help if you kill yourself. Naruto snorted, then moved into a Goken ready stance. Up in the stands Lee's eyes widened in surprise at the blonde's pose. Naruto-kun. That's my. Yes Lee, Guy said, placing his hand on his student's shoulder, causing the boy to look up. After coming to visit you, Naruto begged me to help him train for this fight, and he gave me a man's promise that, after he defeats Niji he will wait for the day you recover. The Tijutsu specialist smiled at his cute pupil. Do you remember what he promised you? Lee blinked, confused, before he felt his eyes widen in remembrance. But I swear, once you've recovered, you and I will definitely fight, one-on-one, -on -one, in a man's fight. Naruto-kun. The recovering genin shook with suppressed tears, clenching a fist. I will remember that promise. Once my body has healed, we shall battle like eternal rivals. I smiled at his student, before eyeing the two in the arena. Niji Naruto fight hard, both of you. Niji scoffed at the blonde's form, smirking derisively. So you're imitating Lee as well, are you? He mocked, hardly impressed. 
You're as bad as Ichiha Sasuke, monkeying around, copying every skill you can get your grubby little mitts on. The Hyuga prodigy smirked at the teen, the very image of superiority. Scrabbling in the dirt at least Ichiha is a survivor, you on the other hand fate did not smile on you the day I became your opponent. Naruto snorted and didn't answer, causing Niji's smirk to grow. What's the matter, afraid? No, just wondering if it hurts. Naruto replied smoothly, face neutral. Niji frowned, obviously confused. Does what hurt? At this Naruto's face changed to a grin that Midarashi Anko would be jealous of. You having a three-foot kunai perpetually shoved up your ass. Up in the stands, Kiba burst out laughing, holding his stomach, whilst Tanada flushed scarlet. Good one Naruto. The boy roared, holding his sides and trying not to fall headfirst over the railing. Hinata merely turned a deeper shade off magenta and tried to get the image out of her mind. Niji however, was not amused inj the slightest. Ayakugan. He yelled, activating his bloodline limit and moving into the Jaiken stance. Naruto's smirk grew more serious as he took a precautionary step backwards. Calling out the big guns early huh? He closed his eyes, well I'm ready for it. As Niji blinked in confusion, Naruto's eyes shot open, blazing red. Higan. Niji, along with Hayuga Hiyashi, winced at this, both not expecting the boy's sudden change in eye color. Hayuga Hanabi tugged on her father's sleeve, her face the picture of puzzlement. Dusama what's, that? Hiyashi shook his head, just as off-guard as his child was. I don't know Hanabi perhaps it's a keke genkai that he's never used before. Sakura stared at her blonde teammate in surprise, since when could Naruto do that? She wondered, yet again confused by the walking enigma that was her teammate. She wasn't the only one, though various adults in the audience were muttering darkly at the obvious reference the boy's tenant. Thanks to Gai-sensei, I can activate the fourth stage at will now but it takes a while to get used to something I wish I had a lot more of. He glared at Niji, his eyes picking up the slightest movement of from the boy, from the blinking of his eyes, to the loose strands of hair being blown in by the breeze. At least I'll be able to see how this damn gentle fist style works. And with that last thought, Naruto suddenly blurred out of view. He's coming form above to the right. Niji dodged and moved strike, only to be surprised as he struck a log instead. As he recovered from his shock, something moved just to his left, shooting towards him like a wrecking ball. Hino has sent you. The high Uga blocked quickly, moving with the kick to lessen the damage, before flipping to his feet to see Naruto once again in the Goken ready stance. What was that about fate not smiling? Naruto asked, smirking at the high Uga prodigy. Perhaps it's because Lady Luck likes me better. Niji snorted, amused at his brief error in judgment. But of course Naruto isn't limited to Tajutsu alone like Lee the genius thought before he charged forwards, aiming for the blonde's heart. Regardless. His skills won't have developed to match Lee's in just a month. As if mocking him, Naruto dodged a Hayuga strike and threw a flurry of punches that were meant to distract whilst avoiding Niji's attempts to close his tenketsu. However, the older genin managed to land a glancing clip on the shoulder, sending searing pain up and down the blonde's entire arm. With a yelp, the blonde backflipped, holding his shoulder to lessen the pain. Damn. Feels like I was stabbed by a kunai. Naruto leapt back again, eyeing the older teen warily from a safer distance. The Hayuga had moved back into his ready stance and was smirking softly, the epitome of calm. Naruto snorted, what the hell is with this guy? Is it physically impossible for a Hayuga to look anything other than dignified? He winced at the pain in his shoulder, feeling the healing red chakra surge through it a lot slower than he'd prefer. When they say it's the strongest style in Kanoha they weren't kidding. He muttered. But you did manage to see how he released his chakra right. Naruto snorted, noting the fox's uncertainty. Yeah, but it'll do me no good until I unlock the fifth stage which I doubt will happen anytime soon. Standing up and rotating his stiff shoulder, Naruto looked at Niji, trying not to show his discomfort. Not bad, you winded me there for a second. Niji made a derogatory sound in his throat, not fooled for a second by the blonde's bravado. Say what you will, destiny has decided that I shall win this fight. Naruto scowled at the teen, feeling his eyebrow beginning to twitch. What is it with you and this entire destiny shit? He growled, looking the older teen over. I mean, knew the Hyugas were the most reclusive clan in Kanoha, but I didn't take them for a bunch of emo freaks. Niji scowled, deciding to put the emo freak ACU'd for the moment. You read those shinobi history books, don't you? Naruto snorted, not seeing the point. Yeah, but I haven't reached the Hyuga section yet I don't think they're even in this volume. He patted his equipment pouch. Niji frowned, then stood out of his stance, reaching for his hit I-8. Then listen well, and I shall tell you of the Hyuga family's legacy of fear and hatred. Naruto felt a shiver go up his spine as he watched Niji replace his hit I-8. Okay Hinata's family is officially fucked up. Naruto thought. 
After hearing Niji's tale, the blonde came to understand just why it was that Hinata's cousin was such an ass, he could almost relate to him in a way. Humming from the boy with a demon sealed in his navel, that means a lot. Kaiubi said coyly, causing Naruto to smirk internally. Shut up, you know you love me. Like the brother I never had. Kaiubi replied, chuckling. Naruto's smirk widened as he cracked his neck joints. Well then Iniki, shall we ask this guy to dance? I prefer women. Though with that hair. Naruto snorted, ignoring the shot at Niji's appearance, watching as the teen finished placing his hit I ate back on. So what, you expect me to give up just because your family has dominance issues? Niji scowled, not expecting such a reaction, clearly he hadn't gotten through to the blonde. I expect you to understand that destiny is like a cage, no one can escape it, only those who are born to be great can achieve great things. He pointed at the blonde, you, a loser without a dreamer ambition, are doomed to failure. Naruto rubbed his nose with his free hand, clearly unimpressed. I think that seal's affecting your brain right now, I swear you're repeating yourself. Niji's face darkened like a thundercloud. Hein then, I'll show you the strength of destiny. Heading into a different stance, the Hayuga prodigy glared at Naruto. It's over, you are within my field of haki. Hayuga Hiashi winced as his nephew completed the main branch's legendary divine palm 64 strikes technique, sending his blonde opponent soaring backwards. He truly is the greatest genius of the clan perhaps his ashi should have been made the branch head instead. Hayuga Hinata winced as her cousin sent Naruto flying, before beginning to cough, blood covering her small hand. Hinata. Kiba yelped, looking around for a medic. You can no longer draw on your chakra, I have closed your tinketsu. Naruto gasped for breath, trying to block out the Hayuag's superior tone. Am even glancing blows are lethal. He pulled himself to his knees, the effort making him wince in pain. If this keeps up I won't last long. Shall I lend a hand? Kaiubi asked, worried. Naruto considered it for the briefest of moments, then shook his head. If I keep relying on you and Nikki, then I won't have kept my promise to Lee. Reaching down and pushing himself to his feet, Naruto brought his hands into the ram seal. Time to lose a few pounds. Dispelling the jutsu on his bracers, Naruto felt himself become much lighter, as he sighed in relief. This did not go unnoticed by Niji, who frowned at the expression on the blonde's face. What happened there? Nothing much, just dispelled the weight jutsu on my bracers. Naruto hopped from foot to foot, letting his muscles relax and stretch. I usually have as much as Lee uses in total, on each limb. Niji's eyes widened, knowing full well that Lee's leg weights weighed as much as two tons altogether. Therefore, if what Naruto said was true, that he were that much on all four of his limbs, it meant the blonde was wearing at least eight tons. The Hayuga shook himself, shock giving way to the patented Hayuga look of superiority. Regardless, you can no longer summon your chakra, this match is. Just beginning. Naruto whispered, right in the Hayuga's ear. Niji spun, only to receive an uppercut to the chin that sent him flying. So fast. He wondered, landing quickly and activating his Byakugan, but against this, he has no escape. Relying on you blood limit is a mistake I intend to make you pay for. Naruto's voice echoed out throughout the arena, making it hard to locate him. Every strength has a weakness and the Byakugan can't be any different. Niji smirked, regardless, a loser like you can never find it. I swear if you go on another of your, I'm destiny's whiny little bitch reels again I'm going to slap you one. Naruto growled, appearing behind Niji with a spin kick aimed for his head. Piba had collapsed due to a laughing fit and was currently being looked over by an Anbu that was on hand. Anada, having already been treated, was flushed beetroot at the blonde's comment. Naruto kun Niji Niasen. Naruto dodged a Jaiken strike aimed at his solar plexus and slammed his heel into Niji's cheek, the loss of his weights had given him a greater dodging ability, and he was slowly wearing the older genin down. Niji lunged forward to attack when he felt something tug on his ankle. The next second, over a hundred shuriken, each attached to exploding tags, darted at him from the trees, at point blank. The true ninja uses his surroundings to his advantage, another loser taught me that one. Naruto yelled, smirking. Shikamaru sniffed at the loser comment, whilst Yusuke and Kuwabara were cheering the blonde on. You tell him kid. Kuwabara yelled, leaning over the railing, wipe that smug smile of his face. Yeah, show what it means to be the underdog. Yusuke added, waving a fist in the air. Niji smirked and twisted his body a split second before the kunai reached him. Peyton. There was a flash of blue, and suddenly, all the kunai were deflected away from the Hayuga. What the hell? Naruto yelped as he barely dodged a following explosion, the end of his coat singed. That move was off the scale. How'd he do that? The divine shell, Katen, an impenetrable dome of chakra that protects me from danger. Niji smirked, the upper hand being his once again. You surprised me before it will not happen a second time. 
Niji lived up to his words, no matter what trick Naruto used, the Dome of Chakra blocked all the blonde's efforts. Crunch time here running low on Chakra he swallowed a soldier pill. Get ready Aniki, this one's gonna hurt. Crossing his arms in front of him, Naruto prepared to unlock the Chakra gates. Up in the stands Lee's eyes widened as he recognized what his friend was doing. Naruto must be desperate. He's going to damage his own body to beat Niji. Roaring as he unlocked four of the gates, Naruto glared at his opponent as the tremendous chakra that the gate sealed off blazed around him. What shocked many however was that the chakra was not the usual blue, but rather a blue intertwined with flashes of red. Niji braced himself as Naruto lunged forwards like a bat out of hell, already beginning the caten. To his great surprise, the Naruto outside exploded into smoke as soon as it touched the barrier. Nani? The genius wondered, completely caught off guard at the sight. Page Bunshin but I sealed your Tenketsu. The ninja sees beneath the underneath so you really should have been watching your feet. Naruto's voice called out. Niji's eyes widened as a foot shot out of the ground, connecting with his chin and sending him skyward, cutting off the katan in mid-spin. Initial Lotus. Naruto cried out, pushing off the floor with his hands, Yuzumaki Naruto style. The chibi. He rose in the air, kicking the Hayuga repeatedly in the chin, much like Lee had with Gara, before bouncing to the wall. Launching off the wall he created a bunshin that leapt up and kicked the prodigy into the air along with him. Nibi. But the cry of Sanbi. He and two bunshins leapt at him, juggling Niji's body like a volleyball, before it fell to the ground. Yanbi. Four bunshins slid across the ground and kicked Niji back into the air. Dobi. Five bunshins darted through the air slamming into the teen as they passed. Rakubi. Six bunshins uppercuted the teen again, causing him to soar higher. Shibi. Seven bunshins kicked him in the back, sending him higher once more. Hachibi. Eight bunshin drop kicked him in the stomach, sending him spiraling down towards the ground before disappearing in a puff of smoke. As Niji watched the ground hurtling towards him, the real Naruto became visible, using Lee's Kajibayo to travel in the Hyuga's shadow. This is for Hinata. Naruto whispered into the stricken teen's ear. Spinning around rapidly, Naruto performed the final blow of the Yur Renge within ten feet of the ground, ramming the Hyuga into the ground with a roar. Ayubi Renden. The hush fell over the stands as the blonde's word sank in. Ayubi Renden the Nine Tails Barrage. I stared at the teen in wonder, was that what he meant by a new technique? He shook his head, Lee couldn't perform that, since he can't mold enough chakra for cage bunshin. The Jounin shivered, even I may have a hard time of it. He looked down at his pupil, who to his surprise was cheering at the blonde. Sugoi. Sensei, did Naruto develop that on his own his youthful passion has definitely been put to good use under your training. Of course, this set Guy off on another of his crying spiels, as he and Lee embraced in a sight so sweet it caused teeth and brain cells to rot. Hayuga Hiashi, however, was shocked to the very core of his being. A move like that should have crippled him, yet he appears to be unharmed could he be channeling the Kayubi's chakra. He felt a shiver go up his spine, smiling to himself. Without a doubt. Yuzumaki Naruto is definitely worth investing the clan's interest in. Naruto gasped for breath as he stood over the crater he'd made with Niji's body. Boy you dead down there? He panted, half expecting it to be true. To his mild relief, a weakened groan was his answer. You're alive then good. He knelt next to Niji and began making seals. Ram, horse, ram, monkey, ram, tiger, dragon, snake. Ninpu. Shinrei Shujutsu. He placed his glowing hands on Niji's chest and began healing the teen's broken body. Normally, I'd leave you here to rot but I'm not the type to hold a grudge against someone who's never hurt me before but the only reason I'm doing this is that I'm pretty certain Hinata would be upset if you died. Niji looked at the blonde as he felt his body slowly begining to mend itself, regardless of the damage. What? Jutsu is this? Naruto flinched as he felt his eyes twinge and then smirked as the Hayuga's internal organs became visible, lined with dim streams of chakra. The fifth stage just activated that'll make the healing go by faster. Focusing on the Hayuga's muscles and organs, Naruto pumped enough healing chakra into the team to make it seem like the injuries were never there. Why? Are you healing me? Niji asked, confused as hell. I am. Your opponent. Naruto snorted and ignored the team for a moment before looking at him from the corner of his eye. Even after I heal you, you're out of chakra and you'll probably pass out once I finish. He grinned as to why you're a bastard, but you're also a Konoha shinobi and I don't like killing a comrade, even if they are bastards. Niji frowned as the teen continued, then felt his eyes getting heavy. Before the prodigy passed out, he felt Naruto tap his forehead. Boy, don't pass out on me yet. The blonde grinned at the Hayuga, making him feel uneasy for some reason. I'll make you a deal, you apologize to Hinata, and I'll try to find a way to get that tattoo of your forehead. 
He smirked at the expression on the older boy's face and elaborated. I believe it's cruel to cage birds, they belong in the sky. Those were the last words a startled Niji heard before he passed out from exhaustion. Up in the Hokage booth, the Sandame smirked. He used the terrain to his advantage, ensured that Niji couldn't time his moves, and used psychological stimuli to throw Niji off. He nodded to himself, clearly impressed. I do believe we have a fine tune in the making. Walking up the steps to the fighter's booth, Naruto smirked at Shikamaru. And that, my friend, is that. The lazy Genin shivered, definitely put out by the fight in the arena. I really don't feel like fighting this guy he muttered, looking over at the other opponents. Or any of these guys come to think of it. Hirama frowned and nodded at Kuwabara, the two sharing the same thought. He's definitely the vessel of the Nine Tails. The commune to the other two members, via sign language. Or they would have, if Yusuke hadn't already jumped into the arena when the blonde had entered. Hey, get down here will ya I'd like to get this match started. Bara sniffed and moved down the steps, taking his time. Baka he's not worth feeding to the sand. By the time Gara had reached the arena, Yusuke had been warned about his language three times and was still hurling obscenities through the air like kunai. Took you long enough, that gourd on your back must weigh a good ton. Bara snorted and immediately began hurling sand at his opponent, hoping to end this farce as quickly as possible. Yusuke. Man, I always hated going to the beach, the sand gets in everywhere, and the food sucked. Now I gotta fight a guy that uses sand as a weapon and has more issues than that girl from the ring. Bara. Sabaku Kayu. Yusuke. Holy. You trying to kill me. Kurama. Laughs weakly, that is the point Yusuke. Next time on Naruto Gaiden. The second round of the tournament. Bara. I shall feed your blood to the sands. What the heck. Naruto watched in confusion as Yusuke dodged all of Gara's sand attacks, seeming to rely on pure tojutsu albeit rather impressive ones, the team seeming to perform double jumps in mid-air at times. Is dodging all this guy's good at? The blonde muttered, watching as the Rhinen back flipped out of the way yet again. Look again, Kaiubi prompted, he's weaving a pattern, trying to make an opening there. Bacha. Yusuke yelled, aiming a finger at Gara's torso, the tip blowing with a pale blue light, causing the Riti to blink in surprise. Ryagen. The flash of light emitted from the digit as what looked like a bolt of pure chakra launched itself at Gara. The unfortunate Suninin only had a few seconds to react before he was slammed into the wall, chips of his sand armor dropping away like broken china as he slumped to the arena floor in a daze. Yusuke blew on his finger and smirked. Oh yeah, that was way worth the wait. Naruto sweat dropped, staring in wonder from the smirking Rhinen to the dazed Suna Genin. The technique that's strong without hand seals. He yelped, that's impossible. Not so, Kaiubi commented, sounding amused at his out Odo's shock, there are a few out there, though they usually require more control. Naruto swore he felt the giant beast sweat drop before coughing slightly. From the looks of it, that one was simply unrefined power eyed hazard, a guess he can only use it a set amount of times a day. Naruto shivered and looked at the Rhinen in trepidation. I sure as hell hope you're right, Aniki. Three shots left Yusuke muttered as he caught his breath, before shooting Gara a wary glance as he slowly got to his feet. And this guy's still got chakra better make him count. Gara pulled himself up and scowled at the teen, wiping a trace of blood from his lips. That one. He muttered, eyeing his opponent darkly, that one actually hurt. Yusuke smirked, tapping the side of his head mockingly. Well duh. He shot out, that's what happens after a direct hit. Gara's scowl deepened, giving Yusuke the creeps with the emotionless bloodlust the Reed seemed to be emitting, before he grinned sadistically. Yusuke winced at the insane look on the Reed's face, before sensing something moving beneath his feet, namely the ground. Shit. He cursed, leaping into the air and barely avoiding the sand that erupted from where he was standing. A stray tendril wrapped itself around his outstretched leg, tightening before the Rhinen could wriggle out of its grip. Ara, smirking in satisfaction, raised a hand above his head, causing the sand to hoist a cursing Yusuke higher into the air, before using the sand to slam his opponent into the ground headfirst. Ouch, Kuwabara muttered, wincing at the sight, Yurameshi will be feeling that tomorrow. Karama nodded solemnly, before casting an emerald gaze over the combatants below. It doesn't appear as if Gara has complete control of the sand though, the redeeded Rhinen commented, Yusu could use that to his advantage. He winced as the Rhinen's yelps of pain from being sent skyward courtesy of sand airlines. If he slows down to think things through. Karama amended, sweat dropping slightly. Naruto looked at the two conversing Rhinens and frowned. Those two he commented carefully, eyeing the redeed in particular, I've never heard of a hidden spirit village have you? It's where I was born. Kaiubi replied simply, causing Naruto's eyes to widen in shock. Your hometown? The blonde yelped, before shooting the two gen in a wary look. Aniki, he asked cautiously, are they demons too? 
Iubi chuckled lightly at the concern in the blonde's tone and shook his head. Not all the residents of Ryagakur are demons, he assured the blonde, it's just that there are as many demons as humans there. It is also the home of the summoned creatures, like Kakashi's dogs or Jiraiya's toads. Naruto let out a sigh of relief, before frowning as he thought for a bit. Wait, if there are things like that there why hasn't anyone found it? Ayubi chuckled in response, causing the blonde to envision the demon's vulpine grin hovering behind him teasingly. Would it be called a hidden village if you could just walk through the front door? Kaiubi asked teasingly, his tails wafting behind him in his amusement. Naruto saw the logic in this and let the fox continue, though he made a mental note to get back at him later. Somehow. However, Kaiubi continued, we demons do not normally walk around the village in our true forms, we tend to take on a human appearance. The Yauko snorted before shaking his head at the memories. It helps save on damages and housing costs. As well as enabling us to get closer to our human allies. Naruto snorted at this, sending mental image of his deadpan face. More likely it makes it easier to get along with them, since you don't accidentally step on them. Iwubi had the decency to look affronted at the comment. That has only ever happened twice, and it was before my lifetime. He countered, before chuckling. Though you have a point. Smirking at his apparent victory, the blonde eyed the Rhinon and nodded inquisitively. So what can you tell me about this lot? What were their names again? The fox asked, waiting as Naruto thought things over. Um no Kurama Kuwabara Kazuma Yurameshi Yusu Kan, I think the shrimp over there is called Jiganshi Hai. Naruto felt the fox's curiosity grow, a good sign in regards to information gathering. Minamino that clan is notorious for their thieving skills, as well as their unnatural good looks, even the men are considered extremely beautiful and are often mistaken for women. I gathered that much. Naruto snickered, remembering the redhead's fight with Kabuto's teammate before allowing Kaiubi to continue. They're also masters of plant-based techniques, the smallest blade of grass is as deadly as a saber in their hands I keep away from the surrounding plant life if I were you or use fire jutsus to limit his field of influence. Naruto nodded, filing those useful tidbits away for future reference. And the others? He asked, waiting as Kaiubi thought for a moment. The name Kuwabara doesn't ring any important bells the only match I have is a Jounin called Shizuru. Her chakra control was legendary, as well as her unflappable attitude. The fox looked through his out Odo's eyes to regard the Rhinon carefully. My guess is they're part of a small family, rather than a clan. He muttered, before snorting in amusement. As for Yurameshi I'm certain that the Yandame Ryaikage's wife's maiden name was that so, this must be his son. Naruto looked at the teen who was swearing up a storm as he decked Gara with a roundhouse kick, followed by an uppercut. He doesn't look that special to me. He muttered, earning a snort from the fox within. Raisin's bloodline tend to have an insurmountable will to succeed, as well as fierce tempers he'll win this fight if it kills him. Naruto snorted, before looking over his shoulder at the last of the Rhinon finalists. And short pants over there. He's probably a member of the Jiganshi family, Kaiubi explained, one of the clans in Ryagakur, famous for having two keke Genkai. Naruto stared at the teen, who continued to ignore him in favor of the match. How can they have two? He wondered, is it some sort of defect? The bloodline affects the family differently, depending on gender. Kaiubi explained, noting his head as he went along, the males receive a third eye on their forehead, called the Jagan or Evil Eye. Naruto winced at the name but said nothing, allowing the demon to continue. It can give the user telepathic powers, can track anything, hide a person's presence, and even control the weak-minded and effective tracking and assassination tool. Naruto whistled and eyed the short teen with minor awe, before shaking his head as his tenant continued. The women received the ability to reproduce without the need for intercourse, Kaiubi added, snorting slightly, which is fortunate, since the clan has a higher birth rate of girls than boys in fact, last I heard, most of the men were killed during a slaughter he's probably the last one. Must make him feel special. Naruto snorted, eyeing the team carefully. Perhaps, the Yauko conceded, the women are also reputed to produce valuable gems from their tears, which explains the clan's abundant wealth. Naruto nodded, before realizing said teen was glaring at him with the coldest red eyes he'd ever encountered. Am he muttered, suppressing a shiver as he broke away from Hai's glare, and I thought Sasuke was cold but this guy. He shook himself, before turning his attention back to the match. Karama that kid's been watching us. Kuwabara muttered mentally, his teammate to nod in reply. Can you sense anything? The redeed asked his lanky teammate, not breaking his gaze from the fight below. Kuwabara frowned and closed his eyes. I sense a sealed presence. He muttered, shaking his head slightly, like there are two minds in his head. Eh, you're probably delusional. A familiar voice cut in, causing Kuwabara's face to flash red with rage. Kuzo Chibi. He shrieked, get th hell out of my head. 
Bah, Hai muttered, like I'd enter if I wanted to or you could stop me. Hirama sighed as Kuwabara attempted to strangle the air in front of him in an attempt to calm down. This mission is getting more interesting by the second. The redeed muttered, smiling at the thought of a challenge. Bara looked up from the task of pounding his opponent to lock gazes with the Kazakiage, who was glaring at him in barely restrained anger. Dusan he muttered emotionlessly, before shaking himself, remembering the plan, and getting ready to put things in motion. Yusuke however was charging towards him, another Ryugan primed on his glowing finger. Dodge this bitch. The teen yelled, pointing his finger at Gara's chest, ready to fire a point-blank shot right at the redeed. I forfeit. Gara cuttered, a deadpan expression on his face. Yusuke was so caught of guard by the San Genin surrender that he barely managed to move his hand before he fired. So instead of decapitating Gara, which had been the teen's original intention the blast caused the Rhinon to go flying backwards as a massive crater was formed in the arena floor. Genkai rubbed her eyes as she shook her head in exasperation. Baka she muttered, eyeing her star pupil in annoyance, pointing at his own feet. When the little boat and cherubs cleared form his sight, Yusuk stood up and began ranting up a storm. What's the deal man? We've only just started. He yelled, getting right up in a startled Gara's face. We are too evenly matched, the redeed muttered, wiping spittle off his shoulders, your attacks can be deflected with a well of sand likewise, you seem able to predict my attacks ahead of me. He pointed at the sun overhead and frowned, looking annoyed. At this rate we'll be at this all day and I have things to do. Sandame Suratobi nodded, frowning carefully as he eyed his younger counterpart out the corner of his eye. Like the invasion of my village. He muttered, before shaking his head and nodding in satisfaction. Regardless, a true squad leader has to know when to retreat Gara would make a fine one. Damari looked over at Gara as he used Suna Shunshin to reappear back in the waiting area. You're up next make it look good. Gara muttered, moving to sit down and recover some of his chakra. Tamari nodded and, using her fan, soared into the arena. Shrimp, you're up. Kuwabara said over his shoulder, before letting out a muffled yelp as Haya used his head as a springboard, launching himself into the ring. Sorry, didn't see you there. Haya said, grinning darkly, whilst Kuwabara swore various threats at the teen's manhood, most of which involved rusted kitchen utensils. The ashy sighed as he covered his younger daughter's ears for what must have been the umpteenth time that day. Youths today he muttered, such language. Damari looked at her diminutive opponent and snorted, shaking her head mockingly. I'm surprised they let you out here, she goaded, shouldn't you still be in diapers? Hae didn't respond, other than to scowl at the girl, causing Tamari to grin before continuing with her tactic. Oh what's the matter, she drawled, leaning over slightly, gonna cry. Hae grinned suddenly, red eyes lighting up with dark humor. You are that's for certain. Damari frowned and whipped her fan out, deciding to wipe the smug look off the teen's face. Inpu. Kama Itachi. The wind roared towards her opponent, tearing up the grass as it did, before it hit though, Hae simply smirked, before disappearing from view. But the Tamari began, before freezing as she felt the business end of a katana pressed against her throat. I suggest you surrender, Hae warned, a small smirk on H.S. lips, unless, of course, you desire to learn to breathe with a slashed windpipe. Tamari tried to reply, without nicking herself on the blade, but still managed to cut herself as she nodded. When her due to surrender, Aoba muttered, Hai Jiganshi. Hai air leased the blonde Kinoichi, before licking the blood off the edge of his katana and smirking. The positive my favorite. Damari, now officially freaked, backed away quickly. First that blonde horror now this guy I'm having second thoughts about this mission. Hai flitted back to the waiting stands ahead of the shaken Kinoichi and grinning at her as she stumbled past, trying not to look at him. Was that really necessary, Hai? Kurama asked, leaning against the wall next to him, prompting the shorter nin to snort. No I could have killed her, he scolded and looked out at the arena, but we were told to keep a low profile. Kurama sighed, shaking his head in a long-suffering manner. You're incorrigible, he muttered, stopping to listen as the fourth match was announced, Kuwabara kun, you're up. All right. The orange-haired teen yelled, watch this Urameshi, I'm gonna prove which of us is stronger. The SSH, Yusuke snorted, waving a hand dismissively, don't trip over your own feet, Kuwabara. Nuts ta you you're a meshi. The teen yelled, leaping onto the railing, you're just upset that your opponent ran away. He snickered, sending a smug look over his shoulder at his annoyed teammate. And that you nearly shot your own ass off at the last second. Yusuke's reply was to punt his lanky teammate into the arena. Shut it. Baka. Huwabara pulled his face out of the ground, hurling enough obscenities to cause even several jonin in the audience to blush or wince, depending on gender. At that minute though, there was a swirl of leaves, and Kakashi and Sasuke arrived. Ah no sorry about that are we late? Kakashi asked, before a salvo of curse words that even Anko blushed it hit his ears. 
up in the stands, Guy had covered Lee's ears, stating that such vulgar language was not meant for children, whilst Ino and Sakura were flushed scarlet. Arachimaru, disguised as an Anbu was mentally making notes. I wonder how much Tsunade would pay for this lot Kukikuku. Bakashi coughed, getting Kuwabara's attention. Pardon the interruption but your opponent is here. Hold your horses. Kuwabara yelled, flipping the bird at the duo, he's made me wait this long, a few seconds won't matter. Bakashi was about to argue when the Kara Top Nin fired another salvo at his teammate, causing the copy Nin to flush. But Kami-sama another abido. Eventually however, the lanky team ran out of breath and as he paused to catch it, the referee seized his chance. Round 4. Ichiha Sasuke vs Kuwabara Kazuma. Kuwabara spun round, red in the face at the interruption. I wasn't finished yet. He screeched pointing at the examiner, damn it, and I thought of a good one there. Sasuke snorted, is screeching all you're good at. My teammate's a lot like that but at least she has the brains to back up her words. Kuwabara blinked stupidly, trying to recall who the team was talking about. That pink-haired ninja girl. He scratched his head, cold as sworn it was a dude. Sakura face faulted while Ino burst out in hysterical laughter, inside Sakura's mind, inner Sakura was raging a one-man war against an image of Kuwabara, with chainsaws. Sasuke snorted, it would appear so. Kuwabara shrugged, ain't my style to insult women so I'll apologize to her later for the mistake. He rotated his shoulder, smirking as the joints popped in readiness. Let's dance, punk. Ten minutes into the match and Sasuke was starting to sweat. Every trap he'd set had been avoided by the teen, and when it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, they seemed to be so evenly matched it wasn't funny. Sasuke's only advantage seemed to be his speed and faster reflexes, only those had saved him from the teen's vicious blows. The arena was pocked with small craters caused by Kuwabara's fists and feet, it was like watching an elephant trying to stamp a mouse. The only difference being Kakashi thought smugly, Sasuke is nowhere near as defenseless as a mouse. He frowned, he may have to use it though and, I don't look forward to Guy's lecture over having him copy Lee's style. Sasuke moved to undo the clasp on his arm, getting ready to put everything he had into this. You're strong I'll give you that. He admitted to Kuwabara from atop the wall, but I'm better. I heard you before skank. Kuwabara yelled get a move on. Or do I gotta come up there after ya? Sasuke smirked, readying the chakra in his hand. Oh don't worry I'm coming down he muttered, making seals the necessary. Ox, hair, monkey. Hirama frowned, his sharp eyes missing nothing as he watched the Ichiha warily. Those seals look very familiar he muttered, before his eyes widened. It can't be. Tadori. Sasuke yelled as the chirping of a thousand birds filled the arena, causing Kuwabara to flinch at the energy discharge and the noise. Damn it's that last attack the blonde used at the tower. He muttered, but nowhere near as powerful as the blonde's guess this is the initial stage huh? Ha. Ha. He scoffed pointing at the Ichiha, so you got a firecracker attached to your fist so what? The lanky teen shrugged dismissively, his eyes closed. Doesn't even qualify as a firecracker come to think of it. That boy's a fool insulting someone with a Chidori in their arsenal. Guy muttered, causing the genin to look at him. Chidori is considered an A-rank assassination technique. Looking over his shoulder he nodded at the cycloptic Janin, who was watching the fight impassively. It's also Kakashi's sole original technique. Your hand becomes a sword that can pierce through anything it's just a straight thrust though, so unless your opponent is secured, it's impossible to attack them without the Sharingan. As he looked at the assorted genin he took in their odd faces and continued, it's also known as Rikiri, because Kakashi once cut through lightning with it. Toji nibbled on some chips, isn't that what Naruto used on Kiba? Then Yuzuka Kiba blanched at this, if the technique could cut through lightning Kiba's married life would have been very boring indeed if Naruto had been serious. I nodded, but add to that the sheer speed required in order to make the technique usable his eyes widened, before rounding on his eternal rival with all the righteousness of youth. Bakashi. How could you use my training style for your own uses? Bakashi sighed. Sasuke lunged forward, his Sharingan tracking Kuwabara's movement, while the orange-haired giant was getting ready to dodge and counter-attack. However, just as Sasuke reached the arena floor, he vanished from view. Shit. Kuwabara yelped, looking round in confusion, he sped up. Do slow. Sasuke yelled ramming his fist into the teen's chest. There was a blinding flash of light that caused many to wince and close their eyes. Bakashi sighed, shaking his head in disappointment. Sasuke at any rate you've won but to let your temper take over like that. As the lights dimmed however, a voice called out, causing the Jounin to blink. Is that it? Sasuke stared in abrupt shock at his hand. The Chidori had worn off, true, but all the technique did was burn the teen's clothes off over the area that was hit. Kuwabara's upper clothing now sported a plate-sized hole over his heart. But there was no wound, the skin wasn't even singed. 
Kuwabara looked from the startled Ichiha's hand to his face, a scowl covering the lanky teen's own as the seconds ticked by. Boy. Quit try and talk hop Ophelia sicko. I ain't into that. Sasuke blanched and stumbled backwards, only to be clobbered by a roundhouse punch to the jaw that sent him flying. Bakashi's old visible eye was bulging out of its socket, completely caught off guard. His technique had never failed it could cut through lightning for shot I saw his sake. But this guy's skin wasn't even singed. Surprised. A voice at knee height called out. Looking down, the group espied the teen's diminutive sensei smirking at them. Kuwabara may be dumb, Genkai muttered, but he's no weakling, and out of all my students he's the hardest worker. She snorted, it's because he wants to beat Yusuke in a one-on-one -on -one fight, something he's yet to achieve, but he keeps coming back for more. The elderly sensei smiled at the idiot warmly. He spent his first few years on the streets, after his sister disappeared, if it wasn't for Yusuke he'd be dead so of course, the big lug figures the best way to show his appreciation is to clobber him. She chuckled, men, they're all the same, going through such complex rituals to disguise the fact that they have emotions. The Kashi smirked at Guy suggestively, coicing the Tejutsu specialist to twitch, before looking at the woman with his sole eye. Excuse me Mrs. Denkai, Miss Genkai thank you. The Jonin muttered, glaring at them with a look that could freeze hell itself. The Kashi winced at the glare, pointing at the lanky teen in confusion. Ah no how did he do that? Denkai snorted, casting a smug look at the copy nin. You weren't here for Yusuke's fight, so you didn't see how he attacks. She chuckled, that dimwit may be my best student but he's got the finesse of a sledgehammer, he's pure force no matter what. Nodding towards Kuwabara she continued, Kuwabara had to toughen himself up to last any amount of time against him, so much so he's revived the lost art. She smiled, by accumulating a vast quantity of energy, you can make it so your skin is tougher than steel it's like those old tales of people who could sleep on a bed of knives. She chuckled, shaking her head at the irony. Thing is Kuwabara doesn't know how he does it, but his chakra control is the best I've seen she sighed, now if only he'd be a little more imaginative. Kuwabara growled as Sasuke dodged his punches yet again. Damn it. At this rate, he'll outlast me gotta pull out the stops. Swiping a kick at the Achiha, Kuwabara grinned as the teen hovered in the air, before clenching his fist. Ryaiten. Ryaiken. To the shock of the crowd, what appeared to be a sword of pure chakra, appeared in the teen's hands, which Kuwabara used to swat the Achiha prodigy out of midair. Dodging like a fly is only gonna get you clobbered. He mocked, tapping the blade against his shoulder, smirking like the cat that got the canary. Denkai looked interested for the first time since the match started. Impressive, she muttered, he used to only be able to do that by channeling his chakra into kunai seems he's taken his skills to the next level. Hayuga Hiyashi stared at the weapon, even with the Byakugan activated, it was clearly compassed purely of raw chakra. The only move that comes remotely close to that is the Yandame's Rasengan or the Nidame's Rage and Ken. He muttered, frowning. But this is nothing like them. With the Ryaiken helping to extend his reach, Kuwabara soon had Sasuke on the defensive once again. At least, until Sasuke noticed the teen wasn't the most imaginative swordsman, and thanks to his Sharingan, was able to detect the blade as it came near, dojing before the teen could get close enough. The Ichiha grinned at the larger Genin as he leapt back to avoid another swing. An extra five feet in range isn't going to help you if I jump back six. He mocked, dodging the sword again thanks to the teen's predictable swordplay. Kuwabara merely grinned, causing the Ichijiha to frown in concern, before he brought the sword upward, making the Ichiha jump in the air again. Gotcha. The Rhinon smirked, thrusting the sword forward like her a spear. Bro. To the shock of everyone in the arena, the sword actually grew in length until it resembled a spear, which was currently lodged in Sasuke's shoulder, and the tree behind him. Kuwabara smirked, holding the spear with one hand with the ease of long practice. The true ninja uses his environment to his advantage. He recited that's the first lesson Master Genkai pounded into my skull guess you missed that one, huh? Sasu coughed out some blood and feebly tried to pull the spear out of his shoulder. Aoba stepped forward, raising an arm to gain tire attention. I'm calling this match before something regrettable happens winner, Kuwabara Kazuma. Kuwabara nodded at the man, before disengaging the spear, catching Sasu as he fell. Easy there, we better get that shoulder looked at. He grinned at the confused Sasuke, good match huh? Let's have another sometime. Sasuke nodded dumbly as the lanky team helped him walk over to the medics. I was weeping, spouting nonsense about chivalry and true sportsmanship, whilst Kakashi and everyone ignored him. Denkai sweat dropped eyeing Thur Waterworks with trepidation. Is he on a medication? She asked, looking up at Kakashi, the Jounin shook his head sadly. Naruto looked up at the lanky teen as he returned to the fighter's booth. He's no genius but he's honorable more honorable than most people I've met. He frowned, and that technique why couldn't I copy it? 
That technique requires a level of control and awareness that you lack thanks to me being placed inside you, Kaiubi explained, I'm effectively dwarfing your control as it is. Fuwabara looked at the genin and frowned, there it is again that feeling that there are two people in his head maybe Genkai's right. Walking up to Kurama he nudged him, nodding encouragingly. You're up Kurama, don't hold back at her. Kurama nodded, before smiling at the teen warmly. Well done by the way, you've really improved. Fuwabara smirked and rubbed his nose. Bah shucks. Fourth match. Minamino Kurama vs Nara Shikamaru. Shikamaru yawned, man this is way too troublesome he looked up at the crowds, it's not like they care about me, after watching the Achiha fight. He looked at his opponent, and this guy other than his battle with Tsurugi I've never seen him fight. Kurama smiled invitingly at the Nara, unsettling him with that eerie beauty of his. Well. The first move is yours. Shikamaru snorted confident bastard but those eyes he's watching me. Deciding to put nothing to chance, Shikamaru used a smoke bomb and used it to hide behind a tree. That won't help you. Kurama muttered, closing his eyes and sending out a silent signal to the surrounding flora. Shikamaru frowned from behind his chosen hiding place, before he felt something creep over his arm, the Nara felt his eyes widen, as he was forced to use his kunai knife to sever the vine that had wrapped around his limb, before making a dash for it, as several others descended from the upper levels of the tree. Damn it. So he can control any type of plant. He muttered, before Kurama's voice snapped him out of his thoughts. Bro's whip. Shikamaru squapped and dived to the floor, eyes widening as the tree he was hiding behind fell, cut in two by the spiked whip the redeed was holding, as rose petals descended around him like snow. The nada flushed as the smell of roses filled the arena. The smell it's quite nice. Bakashi raised an eyebrow, both disturbed and a little turned on at the sight, despite the knowledge the redeed was a male. What on earth is that? He muttered, everything's coming up roses. I made an odd face, as if staring into the distance. There I say it flower power. Everyone gave the spandex wearing Jown in a weird look before sweat dropping, moving at least two steps away, just in case it was contagious. Shikamaru sneezed, rubbing his noise irritably as his allergies kicked in. Damn it. This smells worse than Eno's shop. He moaned, hating when the blonde would drag him into the store, where she made him wait as she changed outfits. This stuff is really strong some form of poison. He frowned at the stoic redeed, Kurama having not moved since bringing out the damnable whip of his. But if that were the case why is he just standing there? He shook his head to clear it of the stench. No matter, Kajime no jutsu. The Nara's shadow shot forwards aiming for the redeed's feet, only for him to leap off the ground and lash out with a whip. Shit. Shikamaru yelled, leaping away and using Kawarimi to exchange with a log, which landed in about twelve different pieces. He's fast a lazy genin muttered, and I just gave away my position he smirked as he got into his thinking pose. Maybe I can use that to my advantage. Kurama shifted softly from one foot to the other, eyeing the location he'd last sensed the Nara's chakra signature. He's moving quickly, using the surroundings to his benefit the Redeed calculated, too quick to trap him with another vine, and my other plants require that I get in close, could he be keeping his distance to draw me in? Hajime no jutsu. Sighing, Kurama leapt back, having expected more from the genin, only for his eyes to widen as the shadow kept growing. How there? He realized, noticing the kunai floating in the air, the plant specialist somehow managed to change direction in mid-air by twisting himself, and proceeded to dodge the shadow user's attempts to ensnare him via an impressive feat of acrobatic skills. Eventually, Shikamaru's shadow stopped stretching, and the redeed landed, eyeing his location warily. There's got to be more to it than that he reasoned, eyeing his opponent out the corner of his eye, he's not as stupid as he looks. Kurama took a moment to calm himself, before running his eyes over his surroundings with a critical gaze worthy of any jeweler. Nothing but barren earth here, so little chance of me using my plants but, it also gives me the perfect view of the field. The eyed the lazy gen in critically, as one general would another prior to the battle. This shadow can't stretch any further what was the aim in drawing me out here. Kurama paused for a moment as something out of the corner of his eye caught his attention, before grinning to himself. Ah, of course see beneath the underneath and all that. The redeed shot an appraising look at his opponent, before calmly flipping his hair back, apparently unaware of his predicament. No doubt everyone is wondering how much longer this is going to last, Kurama called out, the epitome of calm and reserve, and I doubt you're holding out very well over there. Shikamaru snorted, wincing at the strain from using Kajimane so quickly in succession. Maybe, this is kinda unusual for me, trying so hard and all. Kurama shrugged nonplussed. Then what say we make this next move the endgame? Shikamaru raised an eyebrow, apparently agreeing with the redeed. One last toss of the dice, eh? I'm in. Kurama bowed, an elegant smile on his features, causing many to swoon. Then by all means, let us conclude our little match. 
I don't like this, Asuma muttered with a frown, that Rainin's way too cocky for someone on the ropes. Gurunai shrugged, before staring at the arena in awe. I'm just surprised Shikamaru lasted this long being the dead last and all. The smoking Jounin snorted, casting an amused look at his secret crush. Shows what you lot know, Shikamaru's always been that smart, he's just so lazy that I'm surprised breathing doesn't make him sleepy. The Jounin took a drag on his cancer stick before continuing, shooting an approving glance at his favorite student. I first noticed how devious he was during missions, 10 seconds into them, and he'd have the perfect strategy all worked out so I figured I'd test his IQ with a little game. Kurinai looked at him, intrigued at the man's words. Well. How'd he do? The Suma couldn't have looked more proud than if Shikamaru was his own son. Kid's IQ rated over 200. Before the shock Jinjutsu specialist could reply, a snort from knee height caught their attention. Only 200? Genkai asked, looking amused, then he may as well give up right now. She pointed down at the Reed in the ring with a smirk. Haram is a prodigy even amongst the Minamino clan, notorious for being natural-born strategists. Her smirk widened, his academy IQ exam guessed his intelligence to be in the 300 range, she shrugged her shoulders, but that was some time ago, he's improved since then. The aged sensei didn't seem to notice as Asuma's jaw hit the floor, causing it to crack. Shikamaru grunted and retracted his shadow, trying to fake the redeed out as he sent a second towards the hole in the ground, only to cry out in shock as a massive plant shot out of it, blocking the tunnel and sending barbed vines to wrap around him in a cocoon. Ever hear of a parasite vine? Kurama asked, walking forwards as the teen struggled, they are a species of plant that evolved to, literally, feed of other plants. He reached out a hand and stroked the massive thing, almost lovingly. They embed themselves into the host tree and then grow to completely cover it, sucking away at its energy as they go. He sighed, shaking his head, as he cast a cautionary gaze towards the trap genin. Eventually the host tree dies and the vines send out pollen to enable them to spread to other hosts, though few actually become strong enough to take root. Shikamaru cursed within his cocoon, struggling to reach his kunai pouch. What's with the botany lesson? He asked, last I checked, I wasn't a plant, so I've nothing to worry about from these things. True enough Karama chuckled, shaking his head humorously, before his eyes became deadly serious. If this were a normal parasite vine. He held a hand up to his face, clenching it slowly and causing Shikamaru to yelp as the vines tightened. This type has been specially bred to feed on chakra provided by either myself or the plants in my family's gardens, Kurama explained, and in return for the chakra, it obeys my every command. He pointed at the captured genin, his gaze serious. I suggest you not move around so much, the plant is highly excitable and can drain all of your chakra within a matter of minutes, if it deems it necessary or if it's hungry. Shikamaru froze faster than a skinny dipper in the Antarctic, gulping as he noticed a faint stream of chakra flow from one of his wounds down one of the many vines. Aoba raised a hand and nodded, looking mildly impressed. I'm calling this match before someone gets killed, he muttered, winner. Minamino Karama. Naruto shivered slightly as he watched the vine slowly retract, the massive plant shrinking down to a speck which Karama quickly swept up, returning it to its nest in his red locks. Damn that was cool. The blonde muttered, Shikamaru didn't stand a chance. Not so, Kaiubi corrected, the fight could have gone either way, both used the terrain to their advantage, and both made effective use of their skills I wager, had Karama not plugged the hole with that seedy flick from his hair, Shikamaru's attack would have landed perfectly. Naruto frowned, looking at the hole with interest. Isn't that the hole I made when I pummeled Niji? He muttered, flashing back to the match with the Hayuga prodigy. It is indeed, and the other is from when that daft Rainin nearly shot his own feet off. Kaiubi explained, the blast must have created quite the tunnel down there, it's little wonder the holes were linked. Naruto felt as if the fox was impressed, as he watched Shikamaru head back to the steps. Your lazy friend is quite observant. He's not my friend. The blonde growled, before eyeing the Nara carefully. But he is a lot cooler than I thought. He conceded, ignoring the amused snort from his Iniki. Hiei snorted as Kurama re-entered the fighter's booth, looking as cool and aloof as when he'd entered. You're going soft Kurama. He chastised, normally you'd have finished him off with the first move. Kurama merely smiled and looked away. Perhaps, he admitted, but I was getting bored just breezing through the matches, I wanted to challenge my mind a little. Hiei snorted and looked away, frowning as the announcer called up the next match. This could be it. He warned the others, everyone be on your guard. Stay the hell out of my head Kuzo Chibi. Kuwabara relayed, ignoring the warning in his ire. Hiei suppressed a twitch from the taller teen's mental curse, before staring impassively out towards the stands, fingering the hilt of his katana lovingly. Yukina would be upset if I lopped his head off he chanted mentally, restraining his desire to do just that. 
Ak and Ryagakur, the red-eyed teen's twin sneezed as she tended to the birds in the family gardens, looking around in confusion afterwards. Hi Iniki. She wondered, looking around for her twin before shrugging, must be my imagination. Sorry for the delay there folks, hope it was worth the wait. Huwabara. Kuzo, why is that damn shrimp peeking round in my head? Hasn't he better things to do, like grow? Hi. The idiot is eating to himself, how droll. Kuwabara. Why do you keep twerking me every time you open your yap? Kurama. Ah no, Kuwabara-kun, he's only teasing. Hi. Another thing, keep your perverted mind off of Yukina, or I'll be forced to take. Sound of unsheathing katana. Hi. Corrective measures. Kuwabara. Oh I. Who do you think you're accusing of yoikes? Look at the size of that thing. Next time on Naruto Gaiden. Sans plot unveiled. Hidden in the crowd as a civilian, Arachimaru raised a delicate eyebrow at the skills demonstrated by the elusive Ryagakur Genins. The snake Sanin had been interested in learning the location of the village for some time, but his many endeavors had been for naught, since you may as well try to question time itself. As it were, the snake had noticed the nervousness of the sand nins, and deduced from the look on Baki's face that the attack would take place any second now. I had best send word to Dosu to forfeit the match. He conceded, closing his eyes in preparation to perform the jutsu, only to open them again in surprise. The suppression jutsu it's gone. His eyes widened as he eyed the soul Odo Genin remaining, but if that's the case why isn't he following my orders? The snake San and scowled and looked up at the cage booth, not liking the looks of this one bit. I have to warn Sensei but how he blinked, before a very serpentine grin grew across his hidden features, Kukikuku Arashi, I do believe you've ruined me. The woman too rose in front of the Sanin, turned in her seat to yell at the man behind her for feeling her up, only to scream as she came eye to eye with a massive anaconda, which flicked its tongue out to lick her nose. The scream was picked up by everyone in the stadium, alerting the Jounin and Anbu immediately, whilst Arachimaru slithered under the chairs towards the steps. I don't know whether to be impressed or disgusted. He wondered, Sensei better have some good sake for this. Saratobi raised an eyebrow at the sounds of hysterics emanating from the booths, knowing that the odds of an anaconda sneaking into a ninja village were, without a doubt, infinitesimally small. The odds of it not eating anyone that stood still long enough were just as small, that left only one option. Arachimaru's plan must have sprung a leak. He deduced, knowing his student wouldn't take such a huge risk unless he wanted to attract attention, most specifically the Sandames. That means we need to act now. Apparently not moving, the Sandame nevertheless managed to alert Raido to the situation at hand, courtesy of a well-timed look. The scarred Jounin nodded and promptly pressed his foot against the base of the Sandame's chair, setting off the silent alarm that would alert all the Anbu in the immediate area. The Kazakiage, unaware of the actions, sent a meaningful glare towards his offspring, a glare that said quite clearly. Do it now, or I'll make your life a living hell. Ara simply glared right back, his features etching their response to his father's demands. So what else is new? Naruto blinked as he noticed the look on Gara's face, before the Redi Jinchuriki leapt into the center of the arena, a look of calm on his features. Genma blinked before frowning at the teen. Boy, get back up there and watch. He ordered, you forfeited, even if there weren't a match on you. The Jounin's words were cut off as he was forced to dodge a wall of sand, sliding backwards as they receded. Gara, making a seal and glaring, summoned his Sunanote and closed his eyes. There will be much blood to spill. Is anyone else getting a bad feeling about this? Kuwabara muttered, eyeing the sphere of sand in trepidation as the powerful demonic chakra continued to grow. Yusuke snorted and cast him a long-suffering look, that a rhetorical question. He mocked, jumping into the arena, come on Dumbus. The lanky teen leapt after his rival amidst a plethora of curses, earning an annoyed grunt from Hai, who merely blurred out of sight to reappear in the arena. Kurama, turned to the Kanoha Genin and nodded. I would suggest alerting your fellow Leaf Nin to start evacuating the area, he offered politely, things are about to get a little messy. And with that, the Redeed leapt into the ring, summoning his rose whip on the way down. Shikamaru blinked, looking around at the hysteria and the events taking place in the arena. Mendakus why does all this shit have to happen around me? Naruto growled and flipped through the seals for Shinrei Shujutsu, placing his palms over Sasuke's wound to speed up the healing process. Soon as I finish, take a few soldier pills and find Niji he ordered, making sure the Achiha had copied the seals for the Jutsu, just give him a few to get his energy back up and tell him to expect trouble. Ichiha nodded and, after grabbing the bag of soldier pills, promptly used Shunshin to disappear, not a second too soon, as what appeared to be a rattling skeleton, sent several Senbin needles into the wall he'd been leaning against. You're not going anywhere. Kankiru muttered, Karasu clacking away in a threatening manner. Behind him, Tamari unfolded her fan in preparation to deflect any incoming attacks, and Dosu sidled up alongside the Sand siblings, hoisting his melody arm in readiness. 
Naruto sighed and eyed the trio warily, damn I figured there was something off about you guys. He eyed them carefully, so how long have the sound and the sand been bed partners? Long enough. Kankiru replied in a clipped fashion, though from the look on his face he liked the idea a lot less than it showed, Tamari even cast the mummified sound into her right a disgusted glare, all you need to know is that we're going to bring down the leaf. You don't say. Naruto commented, pulling out his book and turning to his page, out of curiosity, that puppet of yours. Kankiru blinked, Karasu. What about it? He asked, frowning suspiciously. Naruto looked up from his book and nodded. Hmm, the crow was it. That's a Sasori model puppet isn't it? He smiled behind his page at the Sunanin's look of shock. Thought so, I hear they come in a three-part set, you lose the other two. Where the hell are you getting your info? Kankiru barked, miffed at the idea that anyone could know so much about his profession that wasn't an ally. From this book. Naruto replied coyly, it lists every famous shinobi and their achievements, in his case, a list of every puppet he ever made before defecting from the sand. He blinked at the look on the sand genin's face and held up the novel, interested. Care to take a look? Hankiru stared hungrily at the book. It was every puppet master's dream to handle a Sasori model puppet. They moved like clockwork, were long-lasting and required very little maintenance outside of battle. To discover every available piece of work would be surpassed only by creating something better than the master. The Mari's fan caught her sibling upside the head, snapping him out of his reverie. Focus. The blonde snapped, we don't have time to be daydreaming. Naruto blinked as the puppeteer muttered under his breath before snickering to himself. Man, has she got you whipped. She's my sister you sick fuck. Kankiru yelled, whilst Tamari looked affronted. Naruto blinked, before turning the page in a dismissive manner. Whatever floats your boat. He commented, smirking inwardly as the Suna sibling swelled up in a rage. It'll kill you, you little shit. Kankiru yelled, moving to send Karasu towards the genin, only to blink as he found himself incapable of moving. Took your sweet time, Shikamaru. Naruto muttered, casting a neutral look towards the Nara Saiyan, you have some sort of grudge against me. Mendikus, the Nara scoffed, that it'd take way too much effort, nah, I just wanted to watch the floor show for a while. Naruto cocked an eyebrow archly, before shrugging and holding out a hand, admission is ten Ryu, cough it up. The Nara snorted, before searching his pockets, causing his captives to do the same, I'm a little short, but I see our puppeteer friend isn't. Hankiru glared murderously at the Nara as he begrudgingly pulled his hand out of his pocket, a wad of bills clenched between his fingers. Naruto shrugged, scooped up Ten Ryu, before turning to face the arena. I leave these guys in your capable hands. He commented, leaping over the rail, don't do anything I wouldn't. Shikamaru sweat dropped, casting a worried glance towards his annoyed captives. Naruto you bastard. What the hell am I supposed to do with these guys? Akashi grabbed a kunai in mid-flight and redirected it towards an enemy shinobi, the unfortunate sand ninja letting out a cut-off scream as it lodged in his jugular vein. This isn't good. He muttered, eyeing the surroundings warily, our backup should have arrived from Odo by now unless Orochimaru screwed up. He shook his head at that statement, knowing that Orochimaru hadn't earned his reputation as the most effective of the Sanin for nothing. The man completed every task assigned to him to perfection, from assassination to simple filing. Kakashi personally believed the man sleepwalked and did half his tasks whilst blissfully unaware. Yosh. My eternal rival. I have defeated 13 enemies already. Guy boasted, having sent a sand down and flying with a beast's footprint in his face. Kakashi merely shrugged offhandedly. Only 13. He wondered, I'm on my 20th. I seemed to bulge at this before launching himself into the fray once more like a badly dressed hurricane, Yosh. If I cannot defeat more than you, I shall sprint around Kanoha on my hands 200 times. The Kashi sighed and was about to make a comment when what looked like 30 sand ninja leapt at them from the sky. He cursed and leapt beside his rival, ready to cover the rear, before a surge of chakra caught their attention. Ha! Huh. There was a burst of light, abruptly followed by several spheres of light ramming into the airborne enemies, sending them hurtling backwards in a mass of twisted limbs and battered corpses. The two rivals blinked, before turning as one to stare, mouths agape at the diminutive form of Genkai as she blew on her knuckles. I believe that's thirty to me. She mocked, before stamping on the foot of the nin creeping up behind her, sending him flying with a follow-up heel kick to the jaw. I stared at the elderly woman in awe, before turning to his rival, mouth working but no words coming out. Kakashi merely nodded grimly. We never talk about this again, agreed. Naruto landed in the arena and sprinted towards the Dome of Sand, the Rhinon having congregated around it like moths to the flame. The blonde activated his Kaigen, wincing as he felt the tremendous chakra surging off the dratted thing. Nai San, I don't like the looks of this. Neither do I out Odo, the fox agreed, be ready for anything. Yusuke turned his head as the blonde arrived, grinning invitingly as he waved him over, hey Yuzumaki. 
pull up a seat. HN, Hai scoffed, always treating things like a game, Baka. Yusuk merely grinned and turned his attention back to the sphere, the smirk dropping to be replaced by a scowl, anyone got any idea what's going on in there? I can't be certain, Naruto muttered, eyeing the teen warily, but if I had to hazard a guess I'd say. Who cares what's happening? Kuwabara yelled, summoning his Ryaiken, let's crack this egg. With that, the lanky teen leaped at the sphere, ready to cleave it open in one fell swoop, only for the defensive spikes to ram into his gut, sending him back with a squawk. Naruto sweat dropped, well that was stupid. He muttered, whilst Kurama and Yusuke went to check on the teen, but then I guess thinking isn't his strong point. You'd be right. Hai muttered, smirking at the lummox as he groggily got to his feet, but the fools got the tenacity of a cockroach, he'll live. Naruto shivered as he eyed the shorter genin warily, oh yeah, I'm really feeling the love here this guy's like a mini Sasuke, only all the angst's been compressed. Sasuke sneezed, blinking in surprise at the sudden action, before promptly returning to the task at hand. Anyone else? He called out, catching Niji's attention as they fended off the attackers at the hospital. I cannot detect any new enemies, the Hayuga acknowledged, however, it would be prudent to remain here until ordered otherwise. Sasuke flinched at this, but didn't deny the logic in the Hayuga's statement, casting a longing look towards the arena. Looks like I won't be taking part in your fight after all. He muttered, before kneeling to administer aid to a fallen leaf shinobi. Tsuritobi glared at the Kazakiage, all pretense of cordiality, having vanished from his wizened features. Isn't ironic. The younger cage commented offhandedly, your village's name is Konoha, and it burns just as nicely as its namesakes. He grinned in a humorless fashion, shall you live to see the last leaf fall. Kanoha will not fall. Saratobi predicted, gripping the shoulder of his robes determinedly, even if a single sapling remains in the carnage of the flames, it shall grow strong to replace the oak it was sewn from. He glared and ripped off his robes, revealing his battle armor underneath. And I shall ensure the survival of those saplings with all my might as the Sandaim Hokage. The aged Hokage glared at his younger counterpart and got into a fighting stance, Arashi always saw the good in you he muttered, but I'm not as nice as Arashi prepare yourself. Arachimaru slithered through the ranks of enemy nins, trying to locate the source of the dilemma. By all rights his fellow Odo nin should have contacted him by now, but the radio simply came out as static. What in the hell is going on here? He hissed angrily, slitting the throats of a passing sand jown and as he went, they shouldn't be blocking my signals. Problems in paradise, Arachimaru-sama. The senin whirled round to stare in shock at the smug shape of Yakushi Kabuto and several sound shinobi. Where have you been? He hissed, I've been trying to contact you for hours. Kabuto pushed his glasses up his nose and smirked, ah, you see, that's the problem, he admitted, we didn't want to be found. Arachimaru felt a shiver go up his spine as he ran his eyes over the assorted sound nin, Kabuto he hissed, taking in the distinct feeling of danger they were leveling at him, what is the meaning of this? Kabuto put his head to one side, hm, let's see, what was the word again? He sighed and hummed offhandedly, foreign languages never was my strong point. He snapped his fingers, ah, got it. Then smiled and stepped behind the rushing sound nin, waving cheerfully as his eyes glinted. Coup de tat. Naruto grimaced as the chakra within the dome of sand took on a very discomforting feel, like dragging your raw flesh against frozen sandpaper, the hackles on his neck standing out as a sign of his distress. Kuwabara noticed the feeling as well, but his ray can was on a different level entirely than the blonde senses, and it was sending a very clear message to the teen's body. Run you bloody stupid bastard. Eyes. He began cautiously, I think we'd better back off a bit. Yusuke looked at his rival, ready to taunt him for cowardice, only to see the look on the teen's face. The last time he'd seen that look had been during a mission to capture the renegade band known as the Shushin, when the teen had single-handedly faced down the demon Bayako over a pit of lava. Now Yusuke was all for trash talk and loved to get his friends back up as much as any other teen, but there was a time for gloating and a time for listening to the warning klaxon that was Kuwabara's danger senses. Fall back. He yelled, doing so himself, just as the dome of sand heaved out wars, attempting to ensnare anything in its path, it whirled around in a mini tor tornado, before retreating to cover the figure in the center. W wa what the hell Yusuke barked, glaring at what looked like a misshapen snad goblin on human legs weighed a small for it. Gara's second form. All that build up for that. Guwabara looked mildly put out, yeah, I was expecting something the size of a mountain. He muttered, not some guy that looks like a well-placed foot could take him down. Gara let out a low rumble which could be interpreted as a growl on the most primal level, before crossing his arms across his chest. Soon a shuriken. The unlily allies blinked, before avoiding the sand projectiles in their own fashion, Hiei sidestepping them, Kurama vivisecting them, Naruto using Shunshin to avoid them, and Yusuke and Kuwabara either leaping out of the way or deflecting them with the Ryaiken respectively. Okay, I take it back. 
Yu Su commented, glowering at the monstrosity, don't insult the psychopathic gremlin. Arachimaru stood to the knees in a pile of bodies, looking very displeased at this turn of events, as he tapped his foot off one fractured skull. What is the meaning of this, he asked coldly, glaring at the recumbent figure before him, one of the few Otanen that had been spared death via Senen level violence. For the moment. The man trembled, covering his injured flank in fear as he tried to find an escape route, Keikabuto said that you were a relic of the past that would only weaken the sound. He admitted, flinching at the flash of rage that crossed the Sanin's features, Hesaid we had to unite with outside forces to ensure the survival of the sound. Barachimaru hissed in annoyance, winged to take his anger out on the bespectacled man, but the rat had turned tail in the midst of the fighting, and was no doubt halfway to the border of fire country by now. Go on, he encouraged, one are these outside forces. He spoke of. The am shivered in fear, I I don't know. All I know is they wore black cloaks with clouds on. The bottom dropped out of the Senin's stomach at this, leaving him sufficiently distracted for the unfortunate Shinobui to decide to make a break for it. Needless to say, he didn't get far. Back at Suki. Arachimaru hissed, sheathing the Kusanagi no Tsurugi as the man fell in several pieces around him, this is happening far too fast. He glared up at the arena roof, where the sounds of battle could still be heard, even from this distance. I have to get up there. The way I see it, direct attacks are going to be his problem. Naruto theorized, dodging yet another burst off snad in third shape of a shuriken. True he's lost the ability to hurl those bloody sand pillars at us but he's no doubt well protected under that thick hide of his. As if to testify this, Kuwabara managed to sneak up behind the monstrosity and attempted to cleave its head off, only to be met with a dull thud as his weeping glanced off the thick sand-like hide of the creature's head before being batted away like an annoying fly. And in regards to long range, he's not giving us time to set up a decent attack, and if what Naisama said was right, Yurameshi probably only has two shots left. He shot the Tina look and he's hardly going to wasti them on an ineffective strategy. Ryu for your thoughts. Kurama opined, passing next to the teen and looking at him out the corner of his emerald eyes, the blonde shrugged and glared at their opponent. I think we need a plan here. Kuwabara pined, having returned from his impromptu trip to the stands, looking none the worse for wear, other than being covered in dust and debris. No. Really. You think. Yusuke muttered sarcastically, giving the teen a long-suffering look, you're just full of good ideas today aren't you? Irisei team. Kuwabara roared, it's not like you're doing any better. Naruto sighed and eyed the redeed wearily, are they always like this? He muttered earning a weak chuckle from the teen. I am afraid so, Kurama said with a smile, but they usually pull through and forget what the argument was about, so I it's better not to draw it out. Naruto nodded, before turning his gaze back to the fight between Hai and the monstrosity, the little red-eyed Horo seemed to be trying to lop off Gara's legs at the knee, but the Jinchuriki wasn't letting him get close enough. That has got to be the most violent game of tag I've ever seen. Naruto opined, you have anti-ideas. Just one. Kurama admitted, I noticed that when Kuwabara-kun managed to take the rear, it took some time for Gara to react. He dodged another shuriken and nodded, this leads me to believe that there is a massive blid spot in that area, which is compensated for by a denser level of sand armor. Naruto frowned, before sending and calculating glare at their opponent, regardless of the defenses, a blind spot is a blind spot, if we can keep MR sand in my shorts there busy long enough, I think I can find a weak spot back there. Kurama smiled and eyed his arguing teammates, I think I can arrange for a distraction. Sorry if it's a butt short, you know how things are at the end of year. How will Naruto and Kurama's plan be pulled off? What part do Kuwabara and Yusuke have to play? Will Hiei succeed in his attempts to shorten Gara's lifespan, as well as Gara himself? Find out next time on. Naruto Gaiden. Kuwabara. And another thing. If it weren't for my Ray Can, we'd be looking like Swiss cheese by now. Yusuke. Shut up and stop ruining the suspense dammit. Saratobi clasped his hands together and grunted. Ninpu. Shuriken cage bunch and no jutsu. The Yandane Kazuki edge cursed as the single kunai the elderly Saratobi had thrown, became a wall of death that steadily closed in on him. Not bad for an old man. He taunted, but you'll need to be quicker than that. Oten. Doryu Taiga. Blinking in shock, the Kazuki edge let out a elip as the tiles he was standing on became a river of mud, sending him hurtling down the rooftop in the flow. How? He snarled, he's an old man at death's door. I once stood against a yandame for a whole day. You look a little miffed there. Saratobi muttered, socked that an old man can do so much. He scowled at the younger man as he tried to fight his way against the mud flow. Old I may be, Oi won't hear me deny it, but with age comes experience, add with experience, comes wisdom. He clapped his hands together in a new set of seals, glaring at the shocked Kazuki edge the entire time. And with wisdom comes the ability to do great things. The sandame roared, bringing his hands together again, Doton. Doryuidon. 
The dragon's head formed from the earth and began launching miniature bullets of hardened earth at the struggling Kazakiage. The man winced as he fended off the worst of it with his arms, only to stare in horror as the aged cage finished another set of seals. Here you it in. Baru glared at the teen standing before him. It had been 15 minutes since he'd taken this form, and yet they still stood before him, like cockroaches. They simply refused to die, no matter how hard he swatted them. And the blonde one, the one which had terrified Shukaku. He seemed to be looking through him at all times. Tamashi na. The deranged Ritid mitered, Tamashi. That grin of his is giving me the creeps. Kuwabara muttered, it's easy enough to sneak up behind him, but that damn sand is too thick for my Ryaikin to cut through. Yusuke nodded, and I only got two shots left, I sure as hell ain't wasting them. He shot Kurama look, we could use a miracle here MR. Wizard. Kurama nodded, very well, Naruto-kun here believes he can get at Gara's weak spot, but we need a diversion. Yusuke grinned and nudged Kuwabatra, who returned it, count on us. The slick-haired teen replied. Yeah. We're good at catching people's attention. Kuwabara added, before leaping aside to avoid another sand shuriken, oh I. You trying to kill me team. Naruto sweat dropped, um. That was his idea you know. He sighed as the giant teen leapt back into the fray, catching a Suna shuriken and hurling it back at the source, causing Gara to take a step back, at least he's determined. Kuwabara has bore spunk then half the guys in Ryagakur. Yusu cut in, smirking at his rival and best friend, I wouldn't ask for anyone better to watch my back. Sept, maybe Kurama. I heard that you're a meshi. Kuwabara yelled, then used his Ryaiken to slice a shuriken in two, now get your ass in here. I can't distract this bastard by myself. Yusuke sighed and shot Naruto a mock long suffering look, duty calls. He drolled and then leapt into the fray. I have sudden misgivings about this plan. Naruto muttered. Arachimaru hissed as he dispatched another treacherous sound nin, grimacing as the wiped the blood off the kusanagi. They've all undergone a mild four of Kabuto cell manipulation jutsu. He noted, watching as, even in death, the man's wounds closed, it continuously regenerates damage at the cost of chakra. Clever. He stabbed behind him, dispatching a sound nin that he could have sworn was dead two seconds ago. But, mostly annoying. He cursed, looking up as a massive explosion rocked the walls, I see Jureya has decided to show up. Late as usual. He sighed as he listened in on his teammate's loud introduction, before shaking his head ruefully. Always crying out for attention, eh Jureya? He muttered, flipping through the seals for his own summoning, let's see if you react the same as the old days. The great Sen and Jureya cackled as he glared at the summoned snakes. The on serpents. Frozen beneath the glare of my toad. Began. He cried, only to blink as they appeared to be looking not at him, but rather at something behind him. He slowly turned round to find himself face to nostril with a large purple serpent with a bad temperament. Who are you to order my children around? Manda hissed, a serpentine pupil glaring down at the senan. Gureya fraught the urge to wet himself, only to blink as a familiar laugh sent a shiver up his spine. Long time no see, eh? Gureya. Gureya spiked defensively and spun round to face his pale-skinned teammate, you. He yelped, making signs against evil, s stay away. Arachimaru sighed and brushed his hair back, would you calm down, I'm not here to cause trouble. He shot the smaller serpents a glare and waved a hand dismissively, shoo shoo, go on home. The serpents vanished in a puff of smoke, followed by a growling manda. The snake Sanin turned to his teammate, who was eyeing him like a cat eyes a wolf. Really Jureya, we don't see each other for 13 years, and this is how you greet me. The don't you come near me. The frog Sanin muttered, sounding a little more in control of himself, I ain't letting you get that close again. Arachimaru groaned, rubbing his eyes to suppress a growing migraine, are you still hung up about that? He asked, shaking his head, don't you think it's time to put it behind us? The look on Jurea's face told the snake Senin all he needed to know. Very well, let's at least agree that this needs to be sorted out, he muttered tiredly, you take the side, I'll take the other. He smirked at the bear of a Senin, loser has to buy sake. I'm not buying you alcohol again you bastard. Jurea yelled, only for the snake Senin to vanish in a swirl of leaves. Never again. The toad Senen muttered, shivering, once was bad enough. Over here you ugly bastard. Yusuke yelled, hurling kunai and shuriken at the annoyed Gara. The transformed Sunage and Churiki responded by hurling his own sand shuriken at the teen. The transformed Genin blinked as a spear of Kara shot out, impaling the sand weapons and stopping them in mid-flight. Ha! Suna shuriken shish kebab ala kuwabara. The lanky teen called out, earning a look of disbelief from the sand and Churiki. Lek, I can't eat that. Yusuke mocked, send it back to the kitchen. Kuwabara snorted, before spinning like a hammer throw contender and sending the shuriken flying as he disengaged his sword. The sand shuriken hurled towards the sand genin clumsily, before slamming harmlessly against his hide. Mudada. 
Gar growled, you cannot hurt me with my own sand. He blinked as a black blur hurtled towards his knees, deflecting a sword strike from Hai and sending the short genin back several feet. Maybe not. Hai alloted, but you were slow to begin with, all we have to do now is ensure you can't move at all. Gara's eyes narrowed, before widening as he felt the telltale signs of vines creeping along his arm, Nani. Dukurbita Kurdata. Karama called out, perhaps you've heard of it. It's a vine-like plant that inhabits desert regions. The long-haired Redeed walked forwards, eyeing the sand monster carefully, the vines grow from a large underground tuberous root. This plant is capable sprouting and flowering on its stored water after a year with no rain. He narrowed his A's, this variety however, has been specially treated to suck up moisture from its source, even now the roots are burrowing ever deeper into your sand, until they reach the skin. Era snarled, trying to move his massive limbs, only for the plants to tie in their grip. This. Won't hold me for long. He threatened, to which Karama merely cocked a delicate eyebrow. The sand monster's grin grew into a menacing leer. This. Is not the extent. Of my ability. Karama scowled, and then felt a cold shiver run up his spine, as the sand began to rumble. Everyone. Back away. He yelled, leaping back just as there was a monstrous explosion cough sand and dirt. When the dust settled, the Rhinans looked up in awe at the monstrosity that loomed over them. Now. Gara's voice echoed, let the games. Begin. Naruto cursed as he spotted the true form of Shukaku looming in the middle of the stricken arena. Damn it, and I thought you were big. He muttered, directing this thought toward his tenant. Old Biju are roughly that size. The fox muttered, we are demons after all. Naruto snorted and ducked behind a pillar as the giant Tanuki ran its eyes over the stadium, still, we gotta do something about this guy. He muttered. And right now, I'm open to suggestion. A. He noticed something huddled into a corner, or rather three somethings one of which was whining plaintively. Upon further investigation, it was revealed to be the unconscious form of. Hinata. Kiba. Naruto wondered, untying the whining Akamaru and trying to rouse the unconscious teammates, wake up damn it. It's a Jinjutsu. Kaiubi countered, they won't wake up until you break it. Naruto grunted and made the tiger seal, channeling chakra into it before pulsing a palm on Kiba's shoulder, Kai. Kiba grunted and blinked, opening his eyes to stare up at the blonde in sleepy confusion, Rudo. He mumbled, why are you doing in my room? Naruto fraught the urge to slap his forehead and shook the teen, wake Uobaka Inu, there a battle going on. He muttered, shoving past the teen to get to Hinata. Biba blinked, shaking the sleep from his eyes, only to stare in horror at the walking mountain that was glaring right at them. Shit. Nordo. The blonde spun round, only to curse as Garishukaku brought up its paw, heralding a curtain of sand to wrap around the quartet. Shit. Naruto cursed, grabbing Hinata and Kiba, even as the other team grabbed his pet ad held him close, hold onto your balks Kiba. The blonde yelled as he clenched his fingers, I'm going all out. Uzumaki Naruto. Gara Shukaku rumbled, you terrified Shukaku, to the point he wished to escape. The demon's sandy features settled into monstrous leer, by killing you, my existence will surpass even Shukaku's. Shiny. The monstrous giant roared, Sabaku Sasu. The sand contra said, for a brief moment, before exploding outwards as another explosion rocked the stadium. As the dust cleared Shukaku's eyes widened at what he was seeing. What. Is. That. Never thought it would come to this. Naruto muttered, as sweat trailed down his brow, never even got to give this one a test run. He smirked at his opponent as he readjusted the slumbering Hyuga heiress to a more comfortable position, making sure not to rouse her. Uzumaki Ninjutsu Augi. Naruto muttered, his bleeding hand placed against the red fur beneath him, the seal on his navel glowed red, and there were five puncture marks from where he'd stabbed his fingers into it, Kuchius. Shiki Kajin. The blonde eyed his opponent from atop his mount, his arm around Hinata, whilst a stunned Kiba stared down at the ground in disbelief. Ready to fight, Aniki? He asked, to which Kaiubi let out a roar that shook Kanoha to its foundations. But of course. He yelled, let the blood rain fall. Thirteen years ago, a mighty beast descended like the wrath of the more violent gods upon the village of Kanahagakura no Sado. Its fur was a beep red that burned against the retinas, its fastings dripping with blood and death. Taller than mountains the beast stood, howling with outrage at those that stood in its path and demani oft compared the blood which fell upon them as a rain, a bleak merciless prelude to the carnage that followed D in the beast's wake. Thirteen years. And now a familiar presence looms over the stricken inhabitants of Kanoha, under siege from enemies old and new. Kiba stared in awe, shock, and no small amount of horror at the blonde before him, Hinata secured in the figure's free arm. Growing up, the Inuzuka heir had felt an instinctive disliking for the blonde troublemaker, something which set his hackles on edge. It was akin to when a fox had accidentally fallen into the Inuzuka kennels one night, and the pack had torn the poor thing to shreds. 
Many a time Kiba had picked on the little Hellraiser simply for the childish rush one gets from being top dog, and never had he expected the smaller team to fight back. Now it was taking everything the Inuzuka had not to wet himself, as he dug his fingers deep into the fur that adorned the blonde summon mount. Turning round he eyed the nine waving tails with no small amount of awe and terror. It can't be. He whimpered, shaking his head in denial, Nichan told me it was dead. Naruto grimaced as he felt the stabbing pain from his abdomen. He'd give the Yandane one thing, the bastard really knew how to design a seal. If it hadn't been for the Kaiubi's superior knowledge of techniques, combined with centuries of experience, the blonde could never have subverted the seal and gained the strength he now possessed. Still he winced, gripping Hinata tighter to him, stabbing myself with my own fingers hurts like a bitch. He eyed the bloody digits, placed firmly on the giant Vopline head, and smirked not as bad as that Tanuki bastard's gonna be feeling though. Be ready. Iniki. Then Kaiubi's muzzle twisted in what could pass as a smirk, to a jackal, and let a drop of saliva drop from his fangs, you need to ask. He eyed Shukaku with a look of hunger and growled, I haven't been hunting in so long, I'm getting out of practice. Now there's something you don't see every day. Kurama commented, eyeing the massive red vulpine carefully. Hai looked up at the retreat in interest. What, a giant fox and tanuki about to go at it? He snorted, you know what the nobles get up to. Kurama shook his head, that's not it, he pointed at the Kaiubi's head, since when has a noble allowed a human on its head? Hai blinked looking up at the Kaiubi in disbelief, before snorting and turning his head, none of our business, he turned on his heel, we've proven his existence, let's get back to the old hag. Kurama sighed and gestured to Yusuke and Kuwabara, who were tussling with some sand and sound nin that had entered the, now destroyed, arena, prompting them to disappear in a flash of movement. The said nins, bereft of the two teens, turned to the red head and lunged in tandem. I guess we'll be seeing you. Naruto-kun. The redeed noted, before vanishing in a swirl of rose petals, ripping the last of the attacking nins to shreds. Saratobi blinked as the monstrous form of the Kaiubi loomed out from the rubble of the arena, staring down the tanuki that had preceded it. It would appear you're not as pure as you'd like others to believe. The Kazakiage mocked, his green eyes mocking, you sealed the Kaiubi into an infant too. The Yandame did so to protect this village. Saratobi shot back, he never intended for Naruto to be used as a weapon like you did your son. The man was a fool, the Kazakiage snorted, the Bijuu are far too valuable to be allowed to wander around unrestrained. The Yandame valued human life above all else, Siratobi countered, eyeing the battered wind leader sourly, or didn't you learn that when he spared your miserable life? The Kazakiage snared and sent a hail of shuriken at his elder counterpart, only to be blocked by a mud wall. Arashi always said there was good in you, Jendo. Siratobi muttered solemnly, he said Ivan deserves a second chance. Now I'm no mystic, and reincarnation isn't my specialty. He glared at the younger man, but you must have been one hell of a bastard in your previous life. Hiraya cackled as he sent wave after wave of enemies packing with a single summoning of his toads, allowing the mass of amphibians to wreak havoc on anyone unfortunate enough to get in the perverted Senon's way. The fact that he was causing serious damage to proper Puplican private didn't quite wretch his attention. You seem to be doing well. Hirachimaru commented, instantly causing the Senen to freeze up, causing the pale-skinned man to shake his head, oh for I'm just commenting Jiraiya. Stay outside my personal bubble. Jiraiya shot back, rolling up a sleeve and pointing at it accusingly, you're giving me hives. Hirachimaru rolled his eyes and covered his face in embarrassment, watching through the cracks as Jiraiya scratched and whined like a mutt with fleas. Gods he marveled, one little mistake with a sake bottle and a cold night, and they never let you live it down. It's not like I enjoyed it any more than you did. He muttered, eyeing the taller Senen with a deadpan expression, in fact, I had to take a bath in sand for a week to forget the feeling. Shut up. Shut up. Jiraiya screamed, running off and sending Enems flying, as he attempted to put some distance between his former teammate and himself. A-R-R-R-G-H. The mental images you bastard. Arachimaru sighed and calmly backhanded an attacking sand nin, causing the man's neck to collapse inwards. Akashkaibi. He muttered, the one time the three of us actually got close and he freaks out over the tiniest detail. Anata sighed, slowly opening her eyes wondering when she'd fallen asleep. She blinked remembering the coughing fit at the stadium and sitting up straight, only to find herself completely in the dark. Hoko? Doko? She wondered aloud, looking up at the sky, where a pillar of light descended on her, illuminating the area she lay in a circle. The shy Hayuga got to her feet, dusting herself off and looking around. What is? This place? She wondered, stepping forwards, looking around uncertainly. Abruptly, a blur of flowers surrounded her, causing her eyes to widen as they tried to keep up. Fire. Great and deadly, burning in the background. A snake, toad and slug fighting with a monstrous figure dressed in black and red. Armies of shinobi were marching on the village, weapons at the ready. 
The massive fox stood before the armies, howling in rage, as if daring them to step forwards. Atop the fox stood a figure with hair as bright as the sun, above eyes that one minute seemed blue as the sky, the next, as red as blood. There was a flash of light, causing the Hyuga to cover her face. When she opened her eyes, it was to view a nightmare. Bodies, hundreds, thousands of bodies, strewn every which way across a barren battlefield, some looked to be torn to pieces, others burned to a crisp still more loped like their backs had exploded, or something had punched through them like wet paper bags. The sound behind her caused her to turn round. Bathed in the light of a crimson moon, a massive figure stood before her. Stripped to the waist, the lean, muscular figure was spattered with blood, long crimson hair fell to his ankles, the locks hiding his eyes from here. He lifted his head slightly, enabling glowing red eyes to gaze out at her, as he reached out a hand, the claw-like nails reaching out for her. Naruto-kun. Naruto blinked as he looked down at the Hayuga, wondering what on earth she could be dreaming about. Is it just me? Or is she rather flushed? He wondered, noting the blush on the girl's cheeks, must still be recovering. Shaking his head he eyed the tanuki before him with cold eyes, back to Busanus. He muttered, patting his aniki on the head. Ike. Ayubi growled and loomed forwards, sinking his fangs into the tanuki's shoulder. Shit he cursed, forgot how bad this bastard tastes. Shaking his head, ripping out a good-sized chunk of tanuki in the process, the demon lord leapt back to asses the situation. Shukakugara, howled, before inhaling and raising an arm. Duetin. Rinkuitin. The massive sphere of wind came barreling out of the tanuki's mouth, slamming into the fox with what was, apparently, fatal force. A number of watching shinobi cheered, several of them from Kanoha, only to back away in shock as a tail waved through the dust. Is that all you've got? Kaiubi called out, almost bored, I've farted harder than that. Come on balls for brains, that the best you got after 13 years. Naruto sweat dropped and eyed his Aniki with a deadpan expression. Aniki. Language. Irise. The demon yelled back, the Shukaku I know wouldn't let up with a pansy ass attack like that. Show me what you're made of. Rinkuit and Rinshaya. The volley of air bullets hurled towards the fox, who responded by wrapping his tails around him like a coiled snake, shielding him, and HS riders, from the worst of the damage. Out Odo, he muttered, brace yourself. Naruto barely had time to warn Kiba before the massive vulpine began gathering chakra into its mouth. Mine. Kaiubi yelled out, rearing his head back, Mao N. The massive head snapped forwards, jaws wide to emit a massive fireball comps entirely of black flames. The fireball slammed into Shukaku's hide, causing the creature to keen in agony, joined shortly by Gara's own screams. If that didn't wake him the fuck up nothing will. Kaiubi growled, strands of balk smoke trailing between his fangs. You gotta teach me to do that sometime. He commented with a whistle, earining a chikukul from the fox. You sure? It's murder on the throat you know. He mocks eyed, I didn't always have this growling voice you know, completely ruined my singing career. Thank God for that, a sullen voice called out, revealing itself as a fully healed Shukaku, I never knew how to shut you up when you put on that choir boy act, thank God your balls dropped early. You're fine want to talk about dropping balls. Kaiubi hissed, who was it who bailed you out of Altha's jams in the red light district? Who was it who'd go off with the most expensive ones and leave the rest of us with the bill? Shukaku countered, Gara dangling from his head like an oversized pimple. The two Jinchuriki eyed each other as their Bijuu argued over the delicacies of being a player and having a weakness for tail. Both rolled their eyes and covered their faces in embarrassment. Want to get a drink later? Naruto offered, in a feeble attempt to lighten the mood. I don't drink. Gara countered, looking flushed as the demons rambled on, since the discussion had turned to more. Colorful matters. Trust me, Naruto muttered, after listening to these two, I highly doubt anyone's gonna want to be sober anymore. Ara eyed the arguing demons, who were currently arguing about some geisha they'd both been attracted to, before looked the blonde in the eyes. I'll buy. He deadpanned. Tsuritobi gasped, trying to catch his breath as he stood over the corpse of the late Yandang Kazakiyaj. Or rather, the little bloody smear between the tiles which was all that remained of the shinobi leader of the sands. If there was one thing Tsuritobi was proud of it was his ability to get the job done and leave virtually no trace. The smear that was all that remained off Kazakiyaj was barely big enough to register on a cotton swab. I'm getting too old for this. He muttered, holding a hand over his heart while he tried to find his pills, it's time for someone else to take up the reins of Hokage. He smiled sinisterly, recalling the mountains of paperwork awaiting his successor as he swallowed on of his painkillers, and I know just who to ask. Even divided by many miles, all three san and sneezed simultaneously, before making signs against evil. Ureya's sneeze resulted in a Gameyuend and Gakaku combination, which he later claimed was intentional, until he discovered he'd vaporized his favorite peaking spot. 
Barachimaru's resulted in several serpents exiting his nostrils, quite painfully, stripping the senin of his sense of smell for a week afterwards. And as for Tsunade, well let's just say that mistimed sneezes are really bad during poker matches, especially when reveal the extra cards you have been hiding up your sleeves. Tsuritobi sensei's got that look on his face the thought together, that can't be good. Well, that's it for now, hopefully I'll update soon. In all truth, Gaiden was the first true fic I've ever written, so I want to at least finish it off on a good note, but there seems to be a lot in the way. Naruto moaned, spitting out the little umbrella that had been in his mouth as he tried to lift his head off the table. At some point during the night, his head had become glued to the bar top by a substance he really didn't want to identify, meaning there was some pain involved in getting himself free. Never again, he vowed, commenting the universal lie as he twisted his tongue, erg, why does my mouth taste like a badger's ass? He muttered, looking round the bar to some surprise. The Kano had jown and had celebrated the defeat of the sand and sound by doing what they did best, getting absolutely shit-faced and making an ass of themselves. Kakashi had deigned to join in, though the blonde suspected that the one-eyed bastard had spiked his drink with something illegal. He snickered as he recalled Guy's drunken antics in a lampshade, and not much else, as the man had danced the naked hula around his rival, causing Kakashi to foam at the mouth and be carted away by disgusted medic nins, who vowed to return as soon as they dumped his lazy ass off. A moan from the corner caused the blonde to look up, grinning as Gara climbed to his feet, the redeed having foolishly challenged Anko to a drinking competition in his drunken state. The cons. Gara was still a teenager, despite being a jinchuriki, and so suffered from the mother of all hangovers. The pros. Nko was prone to strip tease when properly inebriated, mind you this could take hours to achieve, but was really worth a certain liver failure. You look like crap. Naruto noted, raising an eyebrow as Gara stood up fully, where the hell are your pants? Over there. Gara replied, pointing to a mounted raccoon skull which looked sufficiently surprised, ugh, what the hell did I do last night? Not the hottest, most eligible Jounin in Kanoha naked and dancing, Naruto responded, his healing powers putting his headache to rest, you're gonna be a legend round here. He sweat dropped as he noticed the recumbent form of Ibisu hanging from the ceiling fan like some sort of drunken marionette. I ain't cleaning this up. It's worse than we thought, Arachimaru muttered, it seems Sasori of Akatsuki has infiltrated me entire operation. Who knows how long he's been panning this. I guess it's been since you let that brat Kabuto into the sound. Jiraiya muttered, so what are we gonna do sensei? They sure paleed us for saps back there. Tsuritobi nodded, smoking his pipe as he eyed the damage reports wearily, we need to focus on rebuilding, he stated, however, there is an important matter which I need to discuss with you both. Jiraiya eyed Arachimaru, the two taking a cautionary step back, only to freeze as Tsuritobi glared at them. I'm old, the man muttered, I should have retired as Hokage years ago, but I kept going because I knew that if I stood down the council would elect someone who would destroy everything I worked for. He eyed the two San in carefully, smiling as the look of childish fear crossed their eyes, as it had done in their youth. Sensei, Hirachimaru warned though his eyes showed fear lots of fear, you're doing it again. Yeah, Jiraiya seconded, last time you got that look in your eyes, Oro, and I ended up wearing girls' yukatas. I thought it looked good on me. Hirachimaru uttered offhandedly, earning a look of disgust from Jiraiya, what? I can't help it if I look good in. Shut up. Shut up. Jiraiya screeched, hands over his ears as his hives started acting up again, I can't hear you. Tra la la. Tsuritobi sweat dropped, before shaking his head resignedly, the fact remains that, as my only students, I ask you who we should nominate for Hokage. Tsunade. The two Sanin replied in sync, earning a chuckle from the man as he shook his head. Oh. And why would she make a better god aim than, say, you Urachimaru? She is the granddaughter of Shadai Sama, the very lifeblood of Kanoha flows through her veins, the snake san and nodded appreciatively, she's also the most famous medical ninja in the world, she'll be a tremendous asset in training new medic nins. Sasuke growled as he hid behind the bushes, watching as his damn stalkers refused to just piss off. What reason had he to be interested in a bunch of weak little girls who couldn't even pass the academy exam? He shook his head and used Shunshin to put some distance between them, walking calmly towards the Ichiha district, of which he was the sole current occupant. Wait, Kakashi said he wanted to see me. The teen recalled, wonder what the big deal is, some new jutsu. If we're going after Tsunade, I have a demand, Jiraiya stated, nodding to his sensei, I met this interesting kid a while ago, and I'd like to take him with us. I'd like that as well, Arachimaru noted, Sasuke-kun and Naruto-kun are wasting their talents under someone like Kakashi, the man is an able jounin, but his teaching skills are sorely lacking. Agreed, Saratobi stated, I give you permission to bring Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke to retrieve Tsunade. He eyed the two jounin carefully, keep in contact, and find out what you can on Akatsuki. 
The two nins bowed, before walking out the door together, the bear-like Jiria towering over his teammate. After a moment of silence, they leaned against the wall and exhaled loudly. I thought he was going to blackmail us into being Hokage. Jiraiya gasped, trembling in relief, can you imagine the horror? All that paperwork. Arachimaru shivered, and having to listen to those wrinkly old bastards on the council bitch and whine all day. He shook himself and coughed, Tsunade's perfect for the job. Yeah, Jiraiya agreed, once she puts her foot down, it stays down. No matter who's under it. He added as an afterthought. Tsunade stared in disbelief at the slot machine as it announced she'd won the grand prize, money pouring out of the slots like rivers. Shizun was squealing in joy as she twirled a startled tunt on around like a toddler. This isn't good. Tsunade predicted, something evil is afoot. But last I checked Jiraiya was in Kumo, looking for research, and Arachimaru's been by setting up his own village. She shook her head and collected her winnings, only to blink as a machine she passed began spewing out more money. Okay, now I know something's going on. Bakashi flinched as he sensed a familiar chakra signature in the dango shop behind him, noting the two gifiers calmly sipping tea indoors. So he's come home. The copy nin muttered, damn it, I can't let Sasu get too close. Mon, he gestured to the newly arrived Ichiha, we're going to start training to further master the Sharingan Chidori combo. Sasuke Shriget Aden followed after the man, nodding to Kurinai and Asuma who nodded, before turning to follow the two men as they left the store. We seem to have picked up a couple of tales, Itachi-san, the larger figure commented offhandedly, quite interesting ones too. Asuma-san and Kurinai-san. The shorter of the two remarked, a close range and Jinjutsu specialist respectively. He paused as the mentioned individuals appeared before them. Well now, he commented calmly, you two have eat well. Asuma's eyes widened as Itachi lowered his straw hat and opened the front two buttons of his coat, displaying his face for all to see. We aren't here to start a war, Itachi stated, his ever-present Sharingan spinning slowly, Weaver, anyone that interferes with my mission will be cut down. He eyed the two Jounin carefully, even you, Asuma-san, Kurinai-san. It seems you two are familiar with Itachi-san. The larger figure commented, removing his hat to reveal a shark-like face, I suppose introductions are in order then. Asagaki Kisum, Kurinai noted, former swordsman of Kurigakur, wanted for rebelling against the Mizukage. She stepped closer to Asuma, who pulled out his trench knives. They're well informed, Kisum muttered, what should we do, Itachi-san? We've wasted enough time as it is, the Ichiha prodigy muttered, lowering his hands, full of shuriken, finish it off quickly. Kisum grinned and lunged forwards, swining his sword down at the surprised Asuma with startling force. Itachi spun to the side and heard the shuriken at Kurinai, only for her to replace herself with a log. The curly-haired Jounin then tried to capture the prodigy in an illusion, only for it to backfire as he used his shuriken against her. Shiny. Kisum yelled, only to be blocked by a very familiar-looking blade, what in the? Sashiburi Daini, Zabuza muttered behind his bandages, having blocked Kisum's weapon with his own, Kisum sensei. Itachi hurled a kunai at the restrained Kurinai, only for it to be deflected and for him to leap out onto the water as a dragon's head nearly smashed him into the pavement. The Kashi Senpai, he noted aloofly, eyeing the Jounin impassively, late as always. Suman, Kakshi muttered, but I have a valid excuse this time. He lifted his Hita 8 to reveal his Sharingan, scowling at the Ichiha murderer, I needed time to think up a way to kick your ass. Itachi looked into the mismatched eyes of his opponent, his dual Sharingan seeming oddly intrigued for some reason. This is unlike you. Kakashi Senpai. He noted, you actually came up with a relevant excuse. I'll try not to make it a habit, Kakashi replied, the two staring at each other like circling wolves, the water rippling beneath them. Meanwhile, off to the side, two former Mist Shinobi were duking it out. The shorter of the two was Mamachi Zabuza, former Kurigakur no Kijian, the other, his former master and comrade, Hashigaki Kisum, the infamous Kurigakur no Kaishin. Kubikiri Haucho deflected the massive Samahada, sparks flying through the air as the shaving blade scraped along the sides. Zabuza moved for a diagonal upward strike, only for Kisum to block, rotating with the blow for a horizontal swing. You've improved, Zabuza. The shark man noted, teeth bared in an insane grin of approval, you never lasted this long in direct combat with me. I'm not your protege anymore, the bandaged nin replied, guarding a strike to the elbow, and unlike these leaf nin, I know your fighting style better than anyone. The two leapt apart, flipping through identical seals as twin sharks formed from the water around them. Suiten. Sukaten no Jutsu. They yelled in tandem, the two sharks smashing into each other, showering them with water. Their seal speed has increased, Kissum noted, raising an eyebrow, and it's certainly true that fighting a colleague is as bad as fighting against the Sharingan. I don't need some fancy eye to tell what you're going to do, Zabuza declared, pointing at his former sensei, you taught me everything I know, and I know you better than anyone. 
Bissom leered at the smaller man and gripped his sword hilt, that may be true, but you're forgetting something. He slammed the tip of the blade on the water, emitting a spike of chakra that blasted the water in the air. I have more chakra than anyone in the land of mist. Even the Mizukage pales in comparison. That is certainly true, Zabuza muttered, gripping his sword hilt, your strength is certainly higher, my speed is certainly higher, your chakra capacity is higher, my speed with seals is higher. He narrowed his eye at the man, pointing his zambatu at him, however, our skill with swords is equal, when all is said, we are equal. Bissom leered, lifting his sword onto his shoulder, well then, he stated, shall we settle this the old-fashioned way. He made a ram seal with one hand, mist bejining to form around them. Let's settle this. With a game of onigoko. Bakashi hurled kunai at the Ichiha, only for several to shoot out from underwater and deflect them. He leapt aside as another Itachi lunged out of the water, a swift knife hand to the throat, dispelling the bunshin as he leapt into the air. Hajibunshin no jutsu. The copy nin called out, two shadow clones forming in a triangle around the Ichiha, flipping through an individual set of seals. Pain. Gakaku no jutsu. Suiten Daibakufu no jutsu. Butin. Datapa. The three techniques lunged towards the target, colliding in a veritable maelstrom that caused waves to lash Agassens the shore. When it cleared, the water was bare, but Kakashi knew better than to let his guard down, and so dodged to the side, as one of his clones took a kunai in the throat. As expected Osharing and Kakashi, Itachi praised, his tone calm as usual, you truly live up to your reputation as master of a 1000 jutsu. The prodigy eyed the older Jounin carefully, you mastery of the Sharingan is indeed impressive, but a transplanted eye can never compare to true mastery, which only an Achiha may attain. I wouldn't know, Kakashi replied, frowning at the man, Kano has been having a shortage of Achiha blood recently. He continued to glare as Asuma and Kurinai appeared beside him, the former looking annoyed at having his favorite smokes drenched, back me up, Asuma, he instructed, Kurinai, you keep an eye out for Jinjutsu. They blinked as a trail of mist floated by, looking over to see a massive dome of mist had formed around the area where Zabuza and Kissam were fighting. It would appear that Kissam is finally getting serious, Itachi noted, drawing attention back to himself with a sigh, closing his eyes, very well. I suppose it can't be helped. Bakashi scowled, before staring in horror as the Ichiha slowly opened his eyes, some base instinct warning him of the danger. Close your eyes. He ordered, earning looks of confusion from his companions, only another Sharingan can face that Jinjutsu. Asuma and Kurinai did as instructed, leaving only Kakashi, his normal eyes shut tight, to gaze into Itachi's Manjiku Sharingan, the world spinning around him as a result. Waig. Sasu cursed as he marched through the streets, wondering where the hell Kakashi had disappeared to, when he bumped into Naruto and the redeated Sand Nin from the invasion. Sup Sasuke. The blonde greeted, what's up? You look pretty pissed. He looked around in interest, one of your gay stalkers cop a feel. Fuck off, Sasuke muttered, thumping the blonde on the shoulder, have you seen Kakashi anywhere? He was supposed to help me train. Not today, Naruto replied, munching on a piece of dango while Gara stared at his own in confusion, for the love of god Gara it's food, it isn't gonna bite you. Naruto eyed the dango suspiciously, before picking it up and devouring one of the balls, a look of surprise coming to his face. It's. Good. He finished, munching at the rest with increased zeal. You see? Naruto replied, munching on his own, there are a whole world of good things to eat out there, though Raymond's still my favorite. He stood up, patting himself off and waved to the redeed, I'll see you around, gotta track down my sensei. Gar waved a dismissive hand, flagging down another tray of dango as the duel left. You two seem to be getting along well, Sasuke noted, earning a snort of amusement from his teammate. What? Jealous. Naruto teased, earning a punch to the shoulder, anyway, you say Kakashi just ditched you. Sasuke nodded, he said he wanted to train me, but then he fell to the ground screaming, only to disappear in a puff o' smoke, he nodded in understanding, so it had to be a kajibunshin. Makes sense, Naruto muttered, but what could cause the bunshin to disengage like that? He blinked as he almost bumped into someone, looking up into a familiar face, Irosenin. Who are you calling an Irosenin? Jiraiya yelled, punching the blonde on the head, before calming down, you should respect your elders brat, especially ones of my caliber. The only elder I respect is Sandame Jiji, Naruto replied, earning a snort of amusement from Sasuke, and besides, how in the hell can I respect a pervert? He's got you there Jiraiya, a cultured voice pointed out, casuing the trio to spin round to face Orochimaru, who was leaning against the wall, Sashiburadana, Naruto-kun, Sasuke-kun. Naruto blinked, pointing at the snake Senin in confusion, what's Hirohibi doing here? He wondered, causing Orochimaru to stumble and Jiraiya to burst out laughing. Hirohibi? Arachimaru wondered, I haven't been called that since Tsunade Haim left. He shook his head, smiling at the fond memories. Naruto-kun, Sasuke-kun, Sandame-sensei has given Jiraiya and myself a mission to retrieve the new godame. 
Dureya grinned at the looks of shock on the teens' faces, now naturally we accepted, but we wanted to bring you two along for the ride. He grinned at Naruto, what you say? I can power you up a lot faster than Kakashi. Naruto was about to mutter a sarcastic remark when he caught the look in Sasuke's eyes. It was a look of hunger at the prospect of power, Nadi just knew that if he didn't tag along to keep his friend in check, he could revert back to angst mode at any time. Give us time to get ready, he muttered, patting Sasuke on the shoulder, we'll meet you at the gates in an hour. Dureya nodded, and the two vanished using Shunshin, leaving leaves dancing in their wake. Zabuza panted for breath as the mist died away. A massive wound leaked blue in his flank, the flesh looking as if it had been shaved as Kisamaproe glycerly pace. You did well to last this long, the shark man noted, dragging his sword through the water like a shark fin, but when it all comes down to it, you're still a guppy to my shark. Zabuza growled, his bandages having come loose during the exchange, eyeing his former mentor warily. This is bad he deduced, I've lost too much blood, and he's hardly scratched. He feebly tried to move, only for the pain in his flank to spike, ugh, forgot how deadly that damn Samahata was. Fucking monster. He glanced over to the side, wincing as Kakashi slumped to his knees on the water, fuck. That other one's a real bastard too. Gotta do something. It's over, Kissam stated, lifting Samahid over his head with an air of finley, but I'll give you credit. You really did improve since the last time I saw you. Zabuza glared up at the Akatsuki as the sword came down, only to blink as a green blur hurled itself through the air, sending the shark man flying. Pinoha Gariki sent you. Oh no Zabuza prayed, shaking in restrained disgust as Kissam landed on the water a good ten feet away, not that. Anything but that. Ah ha ha. Zabuza-san. You're having some trouble. The apparition gave the former Miss Nin a thumbs up, teeth shining with a metallic ting, fear not, Kanoha's bizarre blue beast, Mido Guy, shall assist you. I'd rather have Kissam Sensei slice me to ribbons Zabuza muttered glaring at the beast in disgust, but the next issue of Itcha Itch is due out soon, and I won't die till I've read it. Itachi looked over as his partner was sent flying courtesy of a kick to the jaw, raising an eyebrow at the bizarre apparition responsible for the deed. Kano has Gaokin to Jutsu Master, Mido Guy. He deadpanned, the only man capable of competing head to head with Hada Kakashi on an even playing field. He blinked, feeling a bizarre chill settle over his frame, before leaping to the side as the water he'd been standing eye on froze at an unnatural rate, several senbin needles forming out of water and chasing him as he dashed away. You should watch your back, Haku called out, appearing from the water, dressed in anbu gear, her hunter nin mask in place, I may just stab you in in it. Zabuza's apprentice, Itachi noted, we pauses detailed information on you and your sensei courtesy of Kissam. He eyed the young Kanoichi warily, though I must admit it is a surprise to find you working for Kanoha. The kunai slammed into the back of Haku's neck, only for the mask nin to turn into water, revealing itself as a Mizu Bunshin. A blur of motion to the right heralded a hail of Senban, Itachi leaping back, blinking as several mirrors formed around him. Surrender, Haku called out, appearing in each of the murrows, you and your partner are outmatched. Itachi looked around with a bored expression, before poofing out of existence, revealing it to be a shadow clone. The real Itachi climbed out of the water, dry as a bone and looking a little annoyed. Kiss him, he called out, catching the enraged shark man's attention, we didn't come here to start a war. Kissam cursed, glaring at Guy as he teleported next to his partner, can't be helped, he muttered, using Mizu Sunshin to teleport the two out of there. I'll remember you. He growled, glaring at Guy as he vanished. The Kashi stumbled, sinking beneath the waters until a firm hand dragged him up into the air, Asuma supporting him across his shoulders. Naruto. He whispered, Sasuke. Beware. The Kashi. Asuma barked, shaking the nin as he passed out, shit. We gotta get him to a medic. Zabuza san needs help as well, Kurinai noted, helping Haku supper the former Miss Janin, the latter having already bandaged his side. I took in the situation, before dashing off to alert the Sandame on what had happened. A good thing I had challenged Haku chan to a race around the village. He thought, had we arrived one second later. The beast didn't want to think about it, and so sped off as fast as he could towards the Hokage Tower. You all set? Jiraiya asked, looking the duo over whilst Arachimaru leaned against the wall, dressed in his best traveling kimono then let's go. This guy's supposed to be one of the Sanin. Naruto wondered suspiciously, watching as Jiraiya marched on like a happy-go-lucky kid, at least Hirohibi's acting all reserved. Sasuke-kun. Orochimaru called out, I understand you lack a summoning contract. He smiled at the look of confusion on the Ichiha's face, before tossing him a seal with the Ichiha family crest. I swiped that from a mutual acquaintance of ours a while ago, I believe it should be with you. Sasu ran his eyes over the summoning scroll in interest, blinking as he noticed his mother's name as the last on the list. The cat summoning scroll. He wondered, well Itachi has a crow summoning one. So I guess this works. 
as Jiraiya no doubt explained to your colleague, Orochimaru instructed, nodding at Naruto, you need to sign the contract in your own blood and then make the correct seals whilst gathering as much chakra as possible. He held up a finger, Kakashi tells me you can do two Chidori a day right? That means you should at least be able to perform the technique once if you put all your effort into it. Sasuke nodded before biting his thumb and opening the scroll. Naruto watched on as his teammate got to work before turning his attention over to Jiraiya. So what the hell did you call me out for, Iro Senen? Jiraiya swiped at him, only for the blonde to dodge, humph. I noted your potential during the fight, and besides, you remind me a lot of myself when I was young. Wow, Naruto muttered, I remind an old fossil of himself, how wonderful. He dodged again before smirking up at the man, just teasing, so what is it you're going to be teaching me? I'll show you at the next town. The Sanin replied, scowling good-naturedly at the teen, in the meantime, why don't you keep an eye on your friend, Orochimaru has a nasty habit of forgetting not everyone's like him. The Sanin was cut off as a massive cat appeared out of nowhere and pounced on him, tossing him into the air like a ball of yarn. Oh dear, Orochimaru muttered, supporting an exhausted Sasuke, perhaps he wasn't quite ready yet. Orochan. Jiraiya yelped, being tossed in the air repeatedly by the oversized kitten, stop this crazy thing. Naruto looked between the two senin and gripped his head as he felt the mother of all migraines kick in. I swear to god, Kakashi sensei better have a damn good excuse for not showing up. I hate running away. Kissum grumbled, his cheeks still aching from Guy's kick, and to top it all off, we gotta go through two of the senin. Orochimaru would not be a problem. Itachi monotoned, however, his genius combined with the raw cunning of Jiraiya could prove difficult. Um, Kissum nodded, power-wise Orochimaru was the weakest of the three, he excelled in trickery and subterfuge. He eyed the wailing form of Jiraiya in amusement, Jiraiya was supposedly the easiest to trick, but made up for it by being as stubborn as an ox. Brains and brawn. Itachi noted with a nod, however without their unifying link, the two of them can be easily torn apart. Kissum eyed the Achiha carefully, before shaking his head with a sigh, Itachi-san. You're not still holding a grudge are you? We're going. Itachi cut in, turning on his heel to follow the group from a distance, earning a sigh from his partner as he moved to catch up. Air yeah. Kissum muttered exasperatedly, it's been nine years already Itachi-san, get over it. He chuckled to himself and fell in step behind his teammate, ah well, they say there's nothing more amusing than an Achiha scorned after all. And there we have it. What could be crawling up Itachi's ass? Will Jiraiya escape from the Nico of Doom? Will Naruto survive long enough before committing Harakiri to escape the madness? Who knows? I do that too. Wahaha. If there was one thing Naruto hated more than anything, it was to be kept waiting. It wasn't that he was an impatient little fucker, oh no, with Hata Kakashi as a Jounin sensei, he developed enough patience to outfit a legion of bloodthirsty berserkers. Hyped up on Red Bull and coffee beans. So after three hours of competing with Sasuke in games of speed shogi, dead even, arm wrestling, 10-6, his arm got tired, and the ever-popular I spy, how in the hell Sasuke had spotted a face in the wall he hadn't a bloody clue, he was ready to go out on the town. Screw this I'm out. The blonde muttered, stretching his limbs and popping his neck into place, you come in with. Or do you plan on playing kissy face with your wall buddy? Sasuke merely scoffed and joined him, shooting the knothole that looked far too eerily similar to a lecherous old academy instructor he'd known for comfort. I wonder where those two got off to. The Achiha wondered, hands in his pockets as he walked alongside his teammate, easily matching paces Orochimaru doesn't strike me as the type to visit the red light district. Probably got dragged along looking for Iro Senen. Naruto muttered offhandedly, shaking his head in mock disgust, glaring at the surroundings irritably. And you use your dejutsu to track them. Sasuke asked, his own Sharingan active as he tried to locate those with developed chakra signatures, or rather, those with enough chakra to pass the shinobi status quo. Though considering exactly what was passing for Jen in these days, this was harder than you'd think. Here? Naruto replied, looking at the Achiha like he was mad, this is a place picked out by Iro Senen, people are probably doing the nasty all over the place. Oh come on. Sasuke muttered, only to blink as he realized the blonde wasn't joking. If anything he looked absolutely repulsed you're actually serious. As a heart attack. Naruto muttered, I had it active shortly after we came to town. Let's just say the couple going at it next door must have paid a fortune for the soundproofing. Too much bloody information. Sasuke muttered, shaking his head and wishing desperately he could bleach his brain to clear the images out of them, even as a high-pitched shriek tore through the air. You're evil, you know that. Kissum prodded, lurking in a dark corner as he heard the gut-wrenching, ball-twisting scream echo throughout the town, not even the devil deserved that. Don't you think it's fitting however? Itachi replied, eyeing the scene before him with his usual deadpan expression. Or rather, his deadpan expression with the barest hint of a quirk lip he does claim to possess. Animal magnetism. 
There's animal and then there's animal. Kissam pointed out, shuddering as yet another scream shattered the air, the sound of a scuffle breaking out, ducking into the alcove, even as a kitchen knife embedded itself in the wall, a hair's breadth from scratching Itachi's cheek shit. How's he doing that? He's very. Flexible. Itachi deadpanned, his Sharingan spinning mercilessly in the shadows, looking up to SP his brother and the vessel, as they fought their way through the crowd come, we move. And we move away from what's going on. The shark man implored, only to sigh and trudge after his partner, his eyes screwed as resolutely shut as was possible without tearing his eyelids to shreds. Alright what's all the ruckus? Naruto demanded, eyeing the looks of fascinated disgust on the gathered faces with trepidation. Some were even swinging their guts as they staggered away in horror, though he did catch the occasional, make that numerous odd one that seemed to be either snapping pictures or scribbling something down in little notebooks. It's like a train wreck. One of the sickly muttered, looking decidedly green as he staggered off, his eyes seeing nothing as he trembled wanna look away. But can't. Sasuke shot his teammate a look, an eyebrow arched in silent testimony to the fact he hadn't he understood a word of what the man had just said either. But simultaneous nods, the duo made their way through the crowd with the standard shinobi crowd control technique of employing elbows, knees feet and various pointy implements to tender areas, while simultaneously making sure they weren't seen doing it. Though as they finally broke through the crowd to gaze into the inner circle, they promptly re-estimated the need to be there. Or within several miles of the city for that matter. Boys. Jurea squealed, his eyes wide and bulging, hives bursting agonizingly along every exposed piece of skin, as he fought to free himself from the constrictions of his snake-like companion, who was currently nibbling on his neck get him the hell off of me. Don be like that jai jai. The serpent slurred, long purple tongue licking the already hysterical Senen's face in what was probably intended to be comforting, but only added further incentive for the man to freak out can help it yow Scott's a nice ath. Ureya howled in indignant terror, as said part of his anatomy was groped, rolling around like he was on fire, in an attempt to dislodge his inebriated companion. Arachimaru wasn't he having any of it however, and promptly tightened himself to the larger Senen's body like a boa constrictor. Exactly like a boa constrictor as it turned out. Come on handsome. He drawled out, net stretching, so he was eye to eye with his terrified captive give a sham shuga. Ureya's scream was replaced with a loud, disgustingly wet sound of suction, though his attempts to break free only seemed to double. The suction ended with an audible pop, followed by a round of retching and cursing that caused many to flush scarlet. Now thash wa I'm talking abouts. Arachimaru slurred, head titling upside down on his limp neck as Jureya puked his guts out wanna go again. Naruto, having seen quite enough of this Ngitmer to last him an eternity, promptly turned on his heel, back straight as a poker, and marched back through the dumbstruck crowd, an equally stiff Sasuke at his side. Neither looked at the other, their arms practically soldered to their sides as they marched through the suddenly relenting wall of bodies, only separating for the briefest of seconds, as they stepped around a rather stoned-looking hot eye in a low-cut dress, before marching down the street, still not looking at each other. That was quite possibly the single most traumatizing thing I've seen in my entire life Naruto muttered, shuddering in revulsion as the memory of the scene crept upon him, unbidden. Indeed. I mean, come on, I grew up with a fucking nine-tailed demon fox of death and destruction for a roommate in my skull, and the worst he ever did was teach me how the world was a complete and utter bastard. It is a little stacked isn't it? And I've nothing against. You know. But I never figured Hiro Senen would willingly allow himself to get caught up like that. He shuddered, I mean come on. Kaiubi's trying to commit harakiri inside my skull after seeing that. That would be unfortunate. His companion noted, Naruto finally snapping out of his rant long enough to realize that it wasn't Sasuke he was talking to. For one thing the man was several feet taller, decked out in a rather cool-looking, high-collared black cloak, adorned with random red clouds. If it was any consolation, however, the Sharingan eyes gazing into his own, obviously marked the man as an Achiha, which explained why his presence hadn't immediately been noticed, since he smelled oddly similar to Sasuke, but the lines that marred the otherwise young features and impassive stare were not something the Avenger could have hoped to pull off without overdosing on Botox and painkillers. Uzumaki Naruto-kun. Itachi drawled, his tone flat, unthreatening, yet layered with enough authority and Jinjutsu to make the oceans part and mountains stand aside, you will come with me. But Kami-sama, what the hell are those two thinking? Sasuke muttered, his eyes shut tight as he tried to mentally banish the memory of the scene from his brain. It was times like these that the Ichiha's patented Saishin second no jutsu came in handy, and he was all too eager to scour his mind of every least traumatizing detail. I mean. God. You're telling me? His companion muttered, sounding audibly disgusted half the time I don't even know what that bastard's thinking, let alone what he's gonna pull next. 
Sasu could have replied had he not noticed that the man he was talking to was decidedly not his odd, yet helpful, teammate, but rather a massive crossbreed of what appeared to be a man and a shark, decked out in a black cloak with wreck clouds, a massive bandaged sword sling over one shoulder, and a slashed Miss Tiadi 8 on his head. I tell ya, that guy really knows how to torture people. The shark man muttered, ignoring the fact that Sasuke had leapt into a ready stance, kunai in each hand I've seen some scary shit in my time, hell, who hasn't tea in this day and age, but he always manages to give me the freaking creeps. If it weren't tea for leader Sama's orders I'd have switched partners in a second. Who the hell are you? Sasuke snapped, eyeing the shark man warily, his sharingan almost aching from the sheer amount of chakra he could detect coming off the man. What worried him more was the residual chakra he could sense around the weapon, if a weapon it was. The mere presence of chakra implied there was something organic about it. Wow. You reacted just like Itachi sent said you would. The man noted, a hint of amusement in his voice, even as he watched a teen's blood run cold, the knuckles gripping the kunai blanching under the pre-assure of his tightening joints still, I suppose introductions are in order. With one hand he drew his massive weapon, lifting it up high and bringing it down with a crash, creating a massive dent in the road, all of his shark-like teeth on display as he leered at the younger Ichiha's sibling. Hashigaki Kisum, formerly of Kurigaku Elite Swordsman. He leveled the massive weapon at the Ten's face with one hand wanna dance, Sasu-chan. Just as Itachi was reaching for his shoulder, Naruto's Kaigen flared into life, startling the elder Ichiha for a millisecond, more than enough time to summon half a dozen Bunshin to stab him with. However, the Itachi they stabbed merely expanded, chakra surging through him like a tsunami, the clones crying out in alarm as the Bunshin exploded, taking out a good portion of street with it. Having the ability to see through Jinjutsu is pretty damn useful. Naruto noted with a hint of pride, leaping around and sending a salvo of shuriken kajibunshin at his pursuer too bad it yeah, tend to get a little prissy if you don't give them what they want. The fact he'd learned the hard way, several times, trying to talk Sasu out of training 24 hours a day. The Ichiha clan, he deduced were far too used to using their Sharingan to get their own way, either by coercion or by simply recording what they wanted. If their prize to Jutsu failed them in this regard, then it was time to whip out some of said previously garnered Jutsu. And unfortunately for him, Kakashi wasn't the only person in the world with the experience to properly wield a Sharingan. In fact, you could consider Kakashi's level of mastery the equivalent of learning the alphabet when compared to the quantum physical genius that was Itachi's own experience. Naruto swore as he dodged another swipe from the older clearly more experienced ninja. He didn't doubt for a minute that in regards to chakra capacity and stamina, he had the elder Ichiha beat. One of the Sharingan's ultimate weaknesses was it consumed an assload of chakra the longer it was activated, and if used to record jutsu, the process was accelerated. The problem with this however, is that most Ichiha had fairly impressive reserves of chakra, since from tender ages, they were expected to perform the B-class Kakaku no jutsu. Also, from what he recalled, Ichiha Itachi had been a prodigy, easily surpassing the vaunted Kakashi in regards to talent, skill, genius and capacity. It didn't he hurt that he had a larger fanbase than the Cyclops either, and had taken up the Jounin's position as Anbu captain, not soon after graduating the academy. Which he de-graduated from three years prior. In layman's terms, it was like fighting ten Kakashis, even without Cage Bunshin. While all this was going on, Itachi was evaluating his opponent, as he always did, weighing in strengths and weaknesses, factoring in personality traits, and overall scanning and estimating the youth's battle level. He was, if not impressed, then at least intrigued by the boy's growth. From what he'd heard, the boy was a bit of an oddity, even amongst the vast assortment of freaks Kanoha had in its menagerie. The Jutsu. Kanoha Gakken Ryu Variation, Note. Greater emphasis on fast attacks, 500 points. Ninjutsu. Varied, highly skilled in cage bunshin, according to rumors, can release inner demon, 3000 points. Jinjutsu. Undetermined, can resist a direct order from developed Sharingan Jinjutsu command, 2000 points. Tactics. Use of kaja bunshin and cramp surroundings to confuse opponent, high speed kawarimi and tajutsu, combined with weapon attacks. Note. Taken battle to rooftops to avoid civilian populace, 2000 points. Innovativeness. Use of cage henge to transform clones into weapons inanimate objects, use of clones to create individual jutsu, familiarization with surroundings within short space of time, 1500 points. Takra capacity. Undeterminable. Potential for growth. Extremely high. Overall battle level. 9000 plus. It seems the Kakashi Senpai is good for something other than keeping up walls. The prodigy noted offhandedly, swatting the real Naruto aside out of a horde of clones, dispatching the rest with a casually tossed kunai, though I suppose your own natural talent is directly to blame for your growth. 
Itachi refused to respond to the youth's callous words and instead opted for driving his foot into said youth's jaw, pinning him to the wall, even as he stabbed kunai into his palms to hold them in check. HK. Not one for pillow talk are ya? Naruto joked, grinning despite the size 12 shinobi sandal pressed into his cheek fe, you're just like Sasuke, down to the stick up your ass. Itachi seemed to fall silent for a few seconds, eyeing the teen's mocking red eyes with his own, Tomo encircled ones, his face heightened by the high collar of his cloak. Sasuke. He began, his tone emotionless, yet somehow different from before. Has he been well? Naruto blinked, eyeing the living embodiment of everything in Sasuke's life that was fuber, as if he'd suddenly sprouted another head. However, if the man was talking to him, he wasn't he trying to stab anything else into him, and he needed time before Kyubi's chakra dissolved the iron in the kunai. Oh sure, just peachy. He replied, eyeing the apparent psychopath sarcastically if you don't count the fact he spends every single, and I'm serious, I've had to bunk with the guy till the village is repaired, goddamned waking moment trying to kill you. He snorted other than that, he eats well, or has been since I moved in anyways, seems to be lightening up too, though if you ask me he needs to either get laid or come out of the damned closet before he bursts. Guy's way to repressed considering we're from Kanoha. I see. Itachi noted, his thoughts, as ever, unfathomable to anyone, even without the collar concealing his features. Even the man's own parents hadn't been able to suss him out, an unrelated brat, albeit one with exceptional talent and the power of the ninth Bijuu backing him up, couldn't even come close than he has become strong. Stronger. Naruto corrected, eyeing his captor warily doubt he could go around with, say, Gara on his own, but he's at least Chunin level in regards to skill and power. I see. Itachi muttered, and for a moment, Naruto thought he saw a flash of pride in those blazing red eyes, but then it was gone, and the cold stiletto steel in his voice returned you shall come with me. Naruto snorted, a grin stretching across his features as he felt the kunai in his palms begin to break ya. Yeah. About that. He stated, before snapping his fists together on Itachi's shin, snapping the ankle joint under the force, even as the Ichiha leapt out of his range not happening. Sasuke leapt skywards, cursing as he watched the steam rise from the spot he'd last seen kiss him. He'd learned, rather abruptly, that direct assaults just weren't going to cut it. The shark man didn't he even try to block them, he just stood there, that annoying as hell grin on his face, as the Ichiha had wailed on him, not even leaving a dent. Hate and Jutsu were out as well, the man was some sort of suetin master, spewing out a wall of water that protected him from being char-grilled. That leaves me with two choices. Kuchius or Chidori. He noted, wincing as he lunged aside to avoid the man's oversized weapon what is it with Mist Nin and big swords. He wondered idly, before snapping out of his daze to avoid a swipe that tore up the earth in its path. You're pretty good at dodging like Itachi-san. Kissum noted, though his tone made it clear he was mocking the Ichiha course, Itachi-san's in an entirely different league. He'd have at least drawn blood by now. Sasuke growled and very nearly fell for the trick, but reigned in his pride before it overpowered him. The mere mention of his brother's name still pissed him right the fuck off, but thanks to Naruto, not to mention several sessions in focusing on his inner self, he had learned to channel the hatred into a cool anger, rather than the typical hot-headedness he'd displayed previously. Calm down. He wants me to charge right in. Itachi probably filled him in on my temper tantrums as a child. He deduced, eyeing the grinning shinobi warily from his hiding place behind a chimney stack, Chidori could easily tear through any suetin barrier he summons up. But it'd still slow me down Neo Ugg for him to slice me open with that sword of his's. Gritting his teeth he brought his thumb up to his teeth Kuchius it is. This is getting annoying. Kissum called out, though in a rather unnerving, Kuchius no jutsu. Just like Itachi sent said. The shark man noted, smirking as smoke filled his field of vision a little prodding, and he goes off like a firework festival. Though it's impressive he knows Kuchius at this stage in his. The shark man's thoughts trailed off as a low yowl reached his ears, turning his head like a rickety skeleton to find several, tiger-sized felines prowling around him. The only reason they couldn't be mistaken for true big cats was their color scheme, which seemed to range from tabby to off-color and royal blue. All of them bore the Ichiha fan on their backs, and all of them were licking their chops as they sized up the biggest piece of fish they'd ever seen. Little known to the rest of the world, one of the greatest, or perhaps infamous, training methods for Mist Shinobi is to throw their young into a pit filled to the brim with starving animals, armed with a single kunai, cover the lid, and leave them in there until there was one survivor, preferably the candidate. After trial and error, the number of useful creatures was reduced from natural predators to animals that could be otherwise tamed, such as dogs, foxes, bats and giant lizards and so on. This bizarre training method instilled a natural, bestial rage and bloodlust in the survivor, and was apparently a hand-me-down from the now-extinct Kagaya clan, who prided themselves on being masters of war, if not masters of common sense. 
The downside, as you might have guessed, is a crippling fear of the particulate animal they were trapped with. For Raiga, it had been ravens, for the Brat Hazuki brothers it was giant squid, for Zabuza it had been crocodiles. Bree guesses what had been locked in the pit with Kissam. Itachi looked up as a hysteric scream shattered the air, one he recognized all too well, and wasn't looking forward to rectifying. Am Karigakur and their bizarre rituals. He cursed, glaring spitfire at the youth below him as he charged up the rooftops oh well. At least he stopped reacting to every feline he sees. Sasuke must have led him into a pet shop or something. Mine. Naruto yelled, descending from above amidst six other clones, each in a different martial pose, as they prepared to simultaneously drop kick the Akatsuki member Hachibi. He needs to work on naming his jutsu. Itachi noted, blocking all the strikes with a clone, though the force of the blows still sent him earthward, raising an eyebrow as the real Naruto shifted into existence behind him. You're going down. The Jinchuriki promised, before flipping round in the final stage of his jutsu Kaiubi Rena. He trailed off, voice cracking as Itachi's hand lashed out, grabbing him by the nuts and clenching hard. The Ichiha systematically gripped the blonde by his collar, eyes flashing crimson as he spun them around like a propeller, slamming the blonde into the ground, shattering it in the process. Ukagumo Sakurasanka. Itachi stated flatly, eyeing the frothing, unconscious teen as he hobbled to his feet, favoring his right foot I'll admit, you are highly skilled for your age. He eyed the comatose teen calmly, but you lack experience. A second scream tore through the air, earning a sigh from the older Ichiha as he shook his head, it seems this mission is a failure. I shall leave you be for the moment. He eyed the comatose teen carefully, before dragging him up to look upon his face, eye to eye but make no mistake. I will be back. And just to make sure you don't forget. Sasuke had Tio admit, he thought he'd seen everything, gender-bending shinobi, demons sealed into children, his entire clan massacred by his own older brother. Hell, half the weird shit in his village didn't even phase him anymore. He ducked out of the path of Samahada as it carved up everything in its path. He had to admit, watching the shark man flail around like a terrified headless chicken had been funny at first, especially with the cats pawing at him like a trapped mouse. Then Sharky had suddenly started frothing at the mouth, his eyes shrinking to pinpricks as he started slashing anything that moved, breathed, or even stood still for too long. Basically everything in his path. Note to self. Get a different set of summoning contracts. He muttered, crawling out of sight as the last of his summons tried to hold the maniac off, only to be dispelled with a single chakra draining shredding, Kissam's hysterical laughter echoing around the street. He grimaced as the shark man's head turned, joints popping as it did so, to spy him crawling away, throwing his hands up in a pathetic excuse for defense, as the monster reared up in front of him, weapon raised to kill. It never came. Instead, he found himself blinking as a second black cloak appeared in front of him, a voice layered with Hinjutsu command sounding out. Enough kissum. It ordered, the absolute authority and those few words causing the hackjals to rise up on Sasuke's neck, snap out of it, you're making a fool of yourself. The shark man paused, eyes dilating busily for a few seconds, before blinking back to normal, looking around in confusion, only to sigh in relief as he espied his comrade sorry about that. He offered, looking uncomfortable with himself, I thought I'd been getting the hang of it. Even with Sharingan hypnosis sessions the level of trauma you've suffered cannot be properly erased. The voice reminded him, Sasuke subtly reaching for his kunai as it spoke as it is, the fact you can withstand the presence of felines until they appear in packs is impressive enough. I suppose you're right. Kissam agreed, though not without a few choice mutterings about blasted felines and the like, before eyeing his partner carefully, you look like hell. Where's the target? I let him go. Was the reply, he impressed me enough to believe that we've been taking things too lightly for a while. I suggest we get a move on. I'm feeling a little drained. You didn't. Use those eyes did you? Kissam asked before sighing as he looked over the man in exasperation damn it Itachi-san. I've told you time and time again. He trailed off as Sasuke lunged at his partner, eyes blazing with fury as he put all of his remaining chakra into a suicide rush Chidori, aimed at the back of his brother's neck. Kissam needn't have worried however, for even weakened, Itachi was still Itachi. He turned swiftly, grabbing the teen's wrist and snapping it like a twig, before pulling off a perfect jujitsu throw, sending the distraught Avenger headfirst into a store window. Orakana. Itachi muttered, staring after his sibling for the briefest of seconds, if you want to kill someone, do it quietly. He then staggered, hissing as the pain in his snapped ankle made itself known, Kissam grabbing him under the shoppelder, before teleporting away. Guerriere. The Karigakur no Kaishin muttered good-naturedly Uchihas are so high maintenance. Itachi shot him a glare, before giving up halfway, allowing his partner to cart them off to one of the many hiding places scattered around the land. When Naruto woke up, it was to find himself staring into the concerned features of Orochimaru. 
This was hardly a comfort, as the man was recovering from a hangover, hair trailing over his features in a manner eerily reminiscent of Sadako, only with wrinkles added to the mix. Nice to see you too. The serpent sniffed, eyeing the teen from below as he continued to scramble backwards up the wall, and would you mind keeping it down? I just got Jiraiya to drink the nerve-calming tea, and I don't need him having another fit again. Naruto eyed his surroundings from his spot in the upper corner of the room, realizing they were in a larger, expensively furnished penthouse suit, a big upgrade from their last room. When he raised an eyebrow at Orochimaru, the pale senin merely snorted and waved a dismissive hand. Let's just say I know someone in the business. He replied cryptically, taking a sip of tea and sighing as it calmed his nerves damn Itachi. What's he doing back here? You know him Hirohibi? Naruto asked, earning a pointed glare from the senin that had the usual lack of effect cause I ran into him after Sasuke and I got separated. He wanted me to go with him. He eyed the senin suspiciously he's not. You know is he? After you? Well of course, you do pauses the Kaiubi after all. Arachimaru reminded the teen I may not have been privileged enough to garner the true intentions of Akatsuki, but the leader, Pain, Cold and T, emphasize enough the collection of all the biju. All the? You mean they're going after Gara too Naruto snapped, eyes wide with concerned fury at the thought of something opening to the redeed I mean come on. The guy's only just getting his life pulled together. I understand that Naruto-kun, Orochimaru assured the teen, but Pain holds himself in very high regard, and with good reason, for he conquered an entire shinobi nation by himself. Naruto shut up at that, eyes wide as he tried to imagine the kind of power such a feat would entail. Well he probably could accomplish the same if he summoned Kaiubi or unlocked the full potential of the Kaigen, he still doubted he'd be able to conquer an entire nation without anyone finding out about it. However. Orochimaru coughed, catching the youth's attention again, you have bigger concerns than that right now, for last I heard their plans weren't set to come about until three years or so. So we got some breathing space. Not bad. Naruto muttered, not following what the Senin was implying, how's that a bigger problem, I'd say it's a big plus. The problem, as you so delicately put it, Orochimaru cut in is that you had to go and impress Itachi, which is a nigh impossible feat to accomplish let me assure you. And believe you me, once you've caught Itachi's eye, he never lets you forget it. So he's got high expectations of me, Naruto muttered, shrugging his shoulders indifferently, so what? So does Sarujiji and Iro Senin, not exactly gonna blow my day. Naruto-kun. Orochimaru cut in, his face deadly serious as he leaned in to look the teen in the eyes, perhaps I'm not making myself absolutely clear here. Catching the eye of Ichiha Itachi is not a good thing. He considers anything interesting his personal object of amusement and will drive it into the ground simply to see how long it will take to break it. Naruto swallowed, feeling a distinct feeling in his stomach that he thought it was fear, only to be half right, as it turned out he needed to go. Really bad. Excusing himself, he leapt for the bathroom, shoving past an irate Jiraiya, locking the door behind him as he approached the porcelain throne. He sighed, letting nature run its course as he looked around the bathroom, taking in the multitude of reflective surfaces in confusion, only to blink as something caught his undivided attention. The burn scar on his ass cheek, one that hadn't been there before, and sure as hell wasn't natural, otherwise it would have healed over by now, thanks to Kaiubi's regenerative capabilities. Eyes wide, he tried to make sense of the M in the mirrored walls, only to give up and run his fingers over them, eyes widening in terror, as the full meaning of Orochimaru's word sunk in. Sasuke awoke to the sound of high-pitched screaming, looking up from his pot on the bed in time to see a pantless Naruto run past, face pale and pupils dilated, his own eyes blinking in disbelief, as he caught sight of the new property of Ichiha Itachi tattoo the blonde had on his ass. What a weird dream. The Avenger muttered, before promptly deciding to take the blue pill and diving back down the rabbit hole to dreams filled with vengeance achieved. Sorry this took so long coming out. Getting the mojo together after so long took longer than I thought. Still, no apology shall be offered, instead, I ask that you be gentle with your reviews and thank you for waiting as long as you have. Also, for those wondering. Saishin second. Literally mind soap no jutsu, a little something they borrowed from the Amanaka clan, killing the creator and burning the scroll in the process. Or Kana. Fans of Akumagaki should recall his taunt, for those who don't, it literally means full moron, spoken in a badass way. Yukagumo Sakurasanka. Anyone that's read the Najima manga should recognize Satsuna's grappling technique for a literal translation floating cloud, Sakura pedal dance. I'll kill the bastard. Naruto hissed, stalking down the country road, his teeth clenched so tight they were cracking, wisps of crimson chakra wafting off him in his ire, I won't leave a scrap of meat. Dead in line. Sasuke grumbled, walking alongside the irate Jinchuriki's right, muttering darkly to himself as he recalled just how easily his hated older brother had taken him down. Like he was swatting a fly. He noted bitterly even with a broken leg he took me down like I was still an academy student. 
Oh come now that isn't very healthy. Hirachimaru scoffed as he kept pace with Sasuke on the Ichiha's right, though internally the snake Senen was seething at being subjugated to his weakness in such a public manner, of course he's stronger than you, he's been running around with S-class missing nin since he left Kanoha behind. Put him out of your heads and focus on your training. And leave the vengeance to me. He hissed to himself, golden eyes narrowing as he put all of his years of experience into devising an appropriate punishment for the prodigal Ichiha little brat, doesn't know who he's messing with. Dirty, dirty never gonna be clean again. Jiraiya muttered, marching along at Naruto's left, putting as much distance between himself and Orochimaru as possible for the moment. Though sure he knew it wasn't Orochimaru's fault and would eventually forget the matter after a week-long bender at the next red light district he could find, but until then he was itching to go senin on a certain prodigal Ichiha and wouldn't feel 100% cleansed until justice had been served. The group had been like this since leaving the town behind, Orochimaru, the only one emotionally stable enough to venture in public after the events of the day before, having caught a tip that Tsunade had drifted towards Tenzaku Gai, which was at best a day's walk away. In all honesty, we should have headed to Tenzaku Gai in the first place. The Senen muttered idly, holding his chin as he walked, deep in contemplation Tenzaku is one of the biggest gambling havens in the elemental nations. Even if she weren't there she'd have had to have passed through at some point or other. Tsunade isn't exactly too popular and Tsuchi no Kuni or Rai no Kuni either. Jiraiya agreed, though he pointedly avoided looking at his teammate as he spoke stands to reason she'd tend to stick to relatively neutral areas where she wouldn't be recognized for her contributions to the war. Contributions. Sasuke repeated, looking between the San and as they conversed before turning to Naruto what contributions. From what they've told us so far she's just some wandering gambler. Naruto shrugged, pulling out one of his now infamous famous shinobi and their achievements volumes and flipping through the contents lessee. Densetsu no Sanin. Here we are. He ran his eyes over the page Senju Tsunade, otherwise known as the Slug Senin, Healing Princess, Legendary Sucker and the Chichigami. Goddess of Boobs. Sasuke repeated disbelievingly, quirking an eyebrow at the blonde who merely shrugged, rolling his eyes in disbelief before turning his attention back to the book. Granddaughter of Senju Hashirama, the first Hokage, and grandniece of Senju Tabarama, the second Hokage. He whistled, hell of a background. She's like royalty or something. The closest thing Kanoha has to it actually. Arachimaru agreed, waking alongside TH teens with a wistful smile, and she made a point of reminding us of it every time. Right up until she failed to make Chunin rank the first time. Jiraiya sighed, a smile on his face, as if recalling one of the fondest memories of his life, wouldn't speak to us for weeks. Didn't you fail on your first try too? Arachimaru asked coyly, chuckling as the man sputtered indignantly at the reminder not that I had any better luck. No way. Sasuke gaped, looking over the two senin in surprised disbelief but. You were the Sanin. The Prodigal Three. Everyone in Kanoha considers you an example on proper shinobi. Believe it or not we only became famous after we all achieved Jounin rank. Arachimaru offered consolingly, a little flattered with the Ichiha's confusion, and we only started calling ourselves the Sanin during the end of the Second Shinobi World War. He added, frowning in distaste it was against the former leader of Amagakur, Sanchao no Hanzo. Now there was a bastard. Jiraiya agreed, spitting to the side as he recalled the only opponent the Sanin had never managed to defeat, even when pooling their resources, Guy fought off an entire army by himself, then turned his attention to our cell. He shivered fiercest fight of my life, no joke. In the end we only lived because he realized the tide of battle was turning. Arachimaru recalled, lips pressed in a line of distaste at the memory, but before that he praised us. Apparently the first time he'd done so in his entire life. Said he'd let us live. Jiraiya grumbled, spitting to the side in distaste, but in return, we had to call ourselves the Densetsu no Sanin, like it was some big honor to be spared by him or something. Hanzo. Hanzo. Naruto muttered, flipping through the appendix of his book for the name here he is. Man this guy was paranoid. Had his own mother strip searched when she came to visit him. What did we discuss about too much information? Sasuke muttered, shuddering at the blonde's words before looking up at Arachimaru so how come we never learned of him at the academy? How good do you think it would have been for morale if children learned their childhood heroes were beaten back by the leader of a backwater nation? Arachimaru replied, snorting at the look of comprehension on the teens' faces, I believe someone once said that history is made by the people who write the textbooks. Dot. In that case consider the council of any major shinobi village the censors that take out the nasty bits. Pricking prudes. Jiraiya muttered. Is there a draft in here? Danzo muttered, covering his nose as he wiped it off, glaring at the rest of the council as he spoke anyways, back to business. The repairs are progressing steadily. Hamura reported, shifting through a stack of papers, however, we still need to refill the ranks that were decimated by the enemy. How could they have killed so many of us? 
Kahara muttered bitterly, we outnumbered Suna's forces at least 10 to 1, and don't get me started on how inadequate Atagakur shinobi were. Not a single jown in rank in the bunch. A civilian counselor muttered, snorting in disdain, but they still managed to take out half our main forces, not to mention ripping through the village proper. Clearly we've let the level of quality drop too far in these times of peace. Danzo stated, not for the first time, but this time he had the recent assault backing him up, I've warned Suratobi that he's let the instructors become too soft on the new batches of recruits. Clearly he hasn't heeded me. Mainly because I know you'll just drumroll as many poor children as possible into your new division. Suratobi spoke out, startling the hell out of the group as he sidled into the room starting the meeting without me. How very rude of you. Suratobi. Danzo muttered, pursing his lips in annoyance as he eyed his one-time rival and superior in sheathed dislike, we were just speaking about you. I have no doubt you were. Suratobi shot back, the look in his eyes letting Danzo know he was having none of it, you do enjoy having these little private conversations behind my back after all. He smirked as the obviously rattled council looked amongst themselves now. Any new business? One major one, Suratobi. Danzo stated, standing up stiffly as he eyed the man, leaning heavily on his cane namely the succession of the Hokage title. Suratobi. Kaharu began, her tone neutral, but placating, you've served as Hokage, and quite well I may add, for many years now. Longer than anyone had right to demand of you. You're damn right I have. Suratobi muttered, but kept his thoughts to himself as he listened to the woman who'd once been his teammate carry on, filtering out the drabble to hear the main points. You're old, give the job to someone else. And surely you can see the sense in electing someone else to carry the responsibility from now on. Kaharu finished, pointedly looking anywhere at Danzo, lest they give the game away. I can indeed. Suratobi agreed, startling his remaining supporters on the council, and even Danzo himself for one thing I wouldn't have to deal with a multitude of false documents that are wormed into my paperwork to wrest my authority away from me. Several civilian members of the council looked away from the old man, and several more pointedly avoiding the look Danzo was shooting them as well. The old warhawk may not have liked Suratobi, if anything he held him personally responsible for Kanoha's state of affairs, but one thing he absolutely loathed was Suratobi including civilians on the council. This was a shinobi village, the main modus operandi was to go out, do missions, kill anyone that looked at you sideways or just plain and simple pissed you off, then come home to recover before the next slaughtering session, all the while hoarding secrets and techniques like pack rats. But Saratobi, in a bid to get the civilians to see that the Jinchuriki, for Danzo refused to see Naruto as anything but an unforged weapon, had granted several notable figures a seat on the council so that they might have a role in the affairs of their home. Once again, the old man's generosity had proved his downfall. The civilians had, rather than openly hunting the boy down, started using the Kanoha legal system to their advantage, writing in loopholes that allowed them to ostracize the brat to their heart's content. Anzo really couldn't have given a flying fuck about that, if anything he thought the treatment would slowly drive the Jinchuriki to its limits, meaning he could legally step in to prevent a repeat of the Kaiubi incident from taking place, forging the nine tails into his ultimate trump card. No, what pissed the director of No off so much was the civilians' attempts to wrest the Hokage's authority away from Suratobi through subterfuge and pathetic deceit. If anyone was going to claim the power of the Hokage name, it would be Danzo, and no one else. And the second he was in the office, the old war hawk would see to it that civilians would not only know their place in society, somewhere above vermin, but well beneath shinobi, but he would purge the influences of their councilmen from his administration. As I was saying. Hirazin continued, noting the dark chuckles coming from Danzo with suspicion, I am quite in agreement with you all regarding the choosing of a god aim, so much so, in fact, that I have sent Jureya and Arachimaru to fetch her for us. Fetch. Kahara repeated, looking confused as several mutters went up amongst the councilmen, Danzo's eyes narrowing in suspicion as he tightened his grip on his cane, you mean this person is an outsider. But Saratobi, who better to lead us than someone that has always put the concerns of Kanoha above all else. You are, again, correct Kaharu. Hirazin agreed, smirking at her knowingly which is why I have chosen my disciple, Senjutsunade, as my successor as Godim Hokage. The silence that followed could be felt by the council, the civilian members struck dumb from surprise and terror at what the venerable elder had just said. They had all, at some stage, encountered Kanoha's princess in her youth and knew Fur's hand that while Saratobi had tolerated their meddling in his affairs, Sunade was not above putting her foot down on interlopers. It didn't hurt that she had no patience for silvered words and, outside of gambling, had the ability to read people like a book. No, the civilian members of the council were not pleased at all with this turn of events. But their distress paled in comparison to the dark anger that was Danzo's ire. Am you Suratobi? The warhawk muttered, locking gazes with his rival, catching the knowing look in his eye, and cursing you had this plan from the start. 
Orochimaru and Jiraiya I could handle. But that wench. He grumbled to himself, recalling the few Tims he had met with Tsunade, and tried to coax her over to his way of thinking. Let's just say Tsunade had left an impression on him. With her knee. Hey, why do you think he needed the cane? Odd and that's how we got the Sandane Kazakiage to sign the peace treaty. Jiraiya concluded, a sigh escaping as he smiled at the memory of those bygone days, I never looked at a banana to query the same way again after that. Orochimaru scoffed, noting that their companions looked torn between arousal and horror, their eyes wide with fascinated horror, like they'd just watched a train crash into an orphanage. She isn't that bad. He assured them when she's sober anyways, just try to avoid her when she's had a few and you'll be fine. Sounds kinda hard. Sasuke noted, a deadpan expression slipping onto his features seeing as, from what you say, she's either drinking or looking for a drink to forget her gambling debts. I'm with Sasuke on this one. Naruto muttered in annoyance if she's like that every waking moment should we only approach her when she's sleeping. No. The two senin yelled, their eyes wide in horror as they clamped their hands over the startled blonde's mouth, his eyes bugging out at the terror in their eyes. Never try to wake her up. Orochimaru insisted, veins visible in his eyes from the terror as he gripped the sides of his head, you have no idea what terror is until you've interrupted Tsunade's beauty rest. So much pain. Jiraiya mumbled, apparently lost in some horrible memory, gripping his mane of white hair between his fingers as he knelt on the side of the road, rocking back and forth make the hurting stop. Oh dear sweet god not the corn. Sasuke and Naruto watched as Orochimaru and Jiraiya huddled together, trembling like newborn foals and pleading for mercy, before looking at each other and nodding, walking up to their respective senseis and giving them a comforting pat on the back. They knew what it was like to be hounded by an angry female. Tsunade sneezed, cursing this apparent cold that had been plaguing her for well over a week now, only to look up in alarm as the slot reels landed on triple sevens, coins spraying out of the machine, littering at her feet as Shizune began scooping up as much as she could. Hi. -y. The medic cheered, racing back and forth between th counter as she went if you keep this streak up, we're likely to pay off half your debts within the week shishu. Baka. Don't just scoop it up. Tsunade yelled, cursing as she tried to make her way through he crowd, who'd swooped in to congratulate her and sneak off with some of the earnings. This is seriously bad. If I don't get out of here soon. Her elbow caught some doddering old fart with a walker in the spine as he hobbled past, earning a yelp as he straightened up, only to blink and rub his back and wonder I I can walk. He cheered, tears running down his aged face as he began to kick his heels for joy I can move again. I feel like I'm 30. Tsunade rolled her eyes, only to blink as she was suddenly beset upon by a horde of old fogies that were offering her their life savings in exchange for her miracle treatment. Needless to say, by the time Tsunade finally managed to make it out of the town, she had was not only several thousand ryo richer, she also had a much better reputation than when she went in. Which basically meant she was pissed as hell. Enzo Sama. One of the faceless, nameless grunts of Nagreeded, kneeling before his lord and master as he hobbled into the dark catacombs that ran under the village your guest is here. One thing after another. Danzo muttered, making his way to the audience chambers, schemes hatching in his mind as he tried to predict Saratobi's next move, only to glare at the cloaked figure waiting for him in the chamber, what are you still doing here? You failed. Failed. Hardly. Kabuto chuckled, removing his cowl all I did was make it clear to Rachimaru that no one bought his tall tales, that the threats that surround Konoha are still very much inclined to slit his throat along with the villages. A risky gamble. Danzo muttered, his hands gripping his cane tightly as he evaluated the bespectacled man, but can you be certain that there are none that would support him? Amongst the troops. None. Kabuto assured him Orochimaru didn't make many friends during the war, most of the ones that joined Atagakur were out for the bounty on his head. He chuckled not that it did them any good. The serpent is good I'll give him hat much. Danzo muttered had I managed to get to him all those years ago he'd be sitting in the Hukage office by now, under my control. But you didn't. Kabuto countered with a smug smirk, you missed your chance, and his teammates jumped in to comfort him right when a few honeyed words could have corrupted his faith and purpose. Be watch your tongue. Danzo growled, tapping his cane, several Anbu operatives filtering into view, only to phase out again, a clear warning that the old man wasn't willing to put up with cheek here in his own domain, what of his so-called elite. The bunch of teenagers drunk of the power of the Tenfuen. Kabuto scoffed without my ministrations their own seals would have devoured them by now, so there's no fear of them turning turncoat. He scowled there are one or two exceptions however. Names? Danzo queried, only to scowl as Kabuto shook his head, and knowing smirk on the youth's face fine, just make sure they aren't a threat to us. Do you maybe? Kabuto chuckled, turning on his heel and pulling up his cowl after all, you're the one that's plotting to undermine the Sandame's authority, I'm merely providing the manpower. 
Anzo glowered at the youth as he walked off, shadowed by several Anbu to make certain he didn't try anything funny, before turning and hobbling back this quarters. He had a long day ahead of him tomorrow, and his wounds needed seeing to again. I will not allow the rot that infests Kanoha to remain any longer. He growled, allowing his medics to see to his scars I put too much effort into driving away the last of the Shaddai's bloodline, I will not tolerate that wench wearing the hookage robes. And so, deep within the bowls of his underground nest, Danzo resumed his plotting, determined to prevent the Senju line's reascension to T-seat of power. He'd managed to pull it off twice now and didn't intend to lose his perfect record. It's just too bad she never had any other siblings. He muttered, recalling the funeral for the Shaddai's grandson, how Tsunade had wept her eyes out, a shadow of the proud, headstrong era she'd once been. It could have driven her off for good. Danzo's plans are in motion, and Kabuto makes a reappearance. Just how tightly wound are these two conspirators? Are there any in Atagakur that would support Orochimaru? And will Tsunade manage to escape the harbingers of good luck? The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.